like to honor our seniors and their families who have supported and guided them throughout their school years. Parents of our seniors, we appreciate all of your support for the past year. Tonight is as much to honor you as your children. We are proud of all of them and are glad we have had a chance to work together. Thank you, Mr. Kilgore and Mrs. Kahn. Our senior academic team member is Miss Ashley Ryan Johnson. Ashley is a 17-year-old daughter of Barbara and Ronald Johnson of Pompey. She is being escorted by her parents. Ashley is an active member of the academic team, National Honor Society, and Upward Bound. She plans to either attend college and pursue a career as an attorney or go to the FBI Academy and pursue a career as a forensic scientist. Ashley is being presented a rose by Clarissa Blankenship, Boys Varsity Cheerleader. Our senior academic team member, Miss Ashley Ryan Johnson. Our senior academic team member is Miss Christy Marie Ramey. Christy is the 18-year-old daughter of Damus and Naoma Ramey of Red Creek. She is being escorted by her dad and her aunt, Laura Ramey. Christy is an active member of the National Honor Society and the Pony Express staff. Christy plans to attend Pipewell College and pursue a career as an optometrist. Christy is being presented a rose by Randa Coleman, Boys Varsity Cheerleader. Our senior academic team member, Ms. Christy Ramey. Our senior JROTC color guard member is Ms. Tiffany Lachey Collins. Tiffany is a 17-year-old daughter of Herbert and Shirley Collins of Lower Palm Beach. She is being escorted by her parents. Tiffany is an active member of Who's Who among American high school students, a member of the yearbook staff, and a member of the JROTC drill team. She plans to attend Pipewell College and pursue a career in medicine and marry her fiance, Randall Ramsey. Tiffany is being presented a rose by Holly Branham, Boys Varsity Cheerleader. Our senior JROTC member, Miss Tiffany Lachey Collins. Our senior JROTC color guard member is Mr. Johnny Day. Johnny is the 18-year-old son of Johnny and Tammy Day of Sloan Street. He is being escorted by his mother. Johnny is an active member of the JROTC color guard and the YMCA. He plans to attend Moorhead State University and pursue a career in communication. Johnny is being presented a rose by Shara Sparks, Boys Varsity Cheerleader. Our senior JROTC color guard member, Mr. Johnny Day. Our senior JROTC color guard member is Miss Tina Ray. Tina is the 18-year-old daughter of John and Shelley Lewis of Upper Cloy. She is being escorted by her parents. Tina is an active member of the JROTC drill team. She plans to attend college and pursue a career as a writer. Tina is being presented a rose by Lydia Hamilton, Boys Varsity Cheerleader. Our senior JROTC color guard member, Miss Tina Ray. Our senior band member and softball team member, Miss Tanya Renee Damlin. Tanya is the 18-year-old daughter of Gordon and Debbie Damron of Hellyer. She is being escorted by her parents. Tanya is an active member of Who's Who Among American High School Students, the softball team, 
Band, Student Council, FCA, TLC, and is also very involved in her church. She plans to move to Ohio or Tennessee and attend a technical college and pursue a career in computer, computer technology and computer science. Tanya is being presented a rose by Shana Bevins, Boys Varsity Cheerleader. Our senior band and softball team member, Ms. Tanya Renee Damron. Our senior band and JROTC color guard member is Ms. Stacy Ann Hall. Stacy is the 17-year-old daughter of Barbara Hall of Payton's Creek. She is being escorted by her mother. Stacy is an active member of the Millard High School Band and is second lieutenant in the JROTC. She plans to go to college and pursue a career as a nurse. Stacy is being presented a rose by Lacey Thacker, Boys Varsity Cheerleader. Our senior band and JROTC color guard member is Miss Stacy Ann Hall. Our senior band member is Miss Lisa Michelle Sick. Lisa is the 17-year-old daughter of Danny and Linda Sick of Upper Cloy. She is being escorted by her parents. Lisa is an active member of the FBLA, National Honor Society, FCA, Student Council, and the FCCLA. She plans to attend Pottwell College and pursue a career in pediatrics. Lisa is being presented a rose by Clarissa Blankenship, Boys Varsity Cheerleader. <laughs> Our senior band member, Miss Lisa Michelle Sick. Our senior volleyball and softball team member is Miss Rihanna Renee May. Rihanna is a 17-year-old daughter of Sherry and Michael Sloan of Millard. Rihanna is being escorted by her father. Rihanna is an active member of the Pony Express staff, FBLA, TLC, and the yearbook staff. She plans to attend the National Business College and pursue a career as a medical assistant. Rihanna is being presented a rose by Randa Coleman, Boys Varsity Cheerleader. Our senior volleyball and softball team member, Miss Rihanna Renee May. Our senior softball team member is Miss Tiffany Nicole Stafford. <laughs> Tiffany is the 17-year-old daughter of Paul and Linda Kilgore of Marbone. She is being escorted by her parents. Tiffany is an active member of the Y Club, National Honor Society, Student Council, FBLA, the Pony Express, and yearbook staff, and is class secretary of her senior class. Tiffany plans to attend Pottville College and pursue a career in psychology and marry her fiance, Adam. The Boys Varsity Cheerleaders and their sponsor, Kathy Bevins, would like to say a special goodbye to Tiffany. They missed her very much this season. Tiffany, cheerleading wasn't the same without you. Tiffany is being presented a rose by Holly Branham, Boys Varsity Cheerleader. Our senior softball team member, Miss Tiffany Nicole Stafford. Our senior baseball team member is Mr. Nick Baldridge. Nick is the 18-year-old son of Jimmy Baldridge and Claudette Pig of Marbone. He is being escorted by his parents. Nick is editor of the Pony Express and is an active member of the yearbook staff and FBLA. He plans to attend Pottwell College and pursue a career in the medical field. Nick is being presented a flower by Shara Sparks, Boys Varsity Cheerleader. Our senior baseball team member, Mr. Nick Baldridge. Our senior boys varsity cheerleading member, Miss Brandy Nicole Agnes. Brandy is the 18-year-old daughter of Jake and Sheila Agnes of Millard. She is being escorted by her parents. Brandy is captain of the boys varsity cheerleading team, president of the Y Club, 
senior class vice president, and an active member of the FBLA, National Honor Society, Student Council, the Pony Express staff, and the yearbook staff. She plans to attend Moorhead State University and major in English or Criminal Justice. Brandy is being presented a rose by Miranda Woods, Boys Varsity Cheerleader. Our senior boys varsity cheerleading member, Miss Brandy Nicole Agnes. <laughs> Our senior boys varsity cheerleading member is Miss Misty Jo Little. Misty is the 18-year-old daughter of Joe and Loretta Little of Rocky Road. She is being escorted by her parents. Misty is co-captain of the boys varsity cheerleading squad and is an active member of the FBLA, FHA, Y Club, National Honor Society, Student Council, and is a member of the Yearbook and Pony Express staff. Misty plans to attend Eastern Kentucky University and pursue a career as a physical therapist. Misty is being presented a rose by Lydia Hamilton Boys Varsity Cheerleader. Our senior boys varsity cheerleader, Miss Misty Jo Little. Our senior boys varsity cheerleading and JROTC Keller Guard member is Miss Leandra Beth Robinson. Leandra is a 17 year old daughter of Wayne and Leisha Aggins of Powell's Creek. She is being escorted by her parents. Leandra is co captain of the boys varsity cheerleaders. Secretary of the Health Occupation Students of America and an active member of FBLA, National Honor Society, JROTC, and FCA. She plans to attend Marshall University and pursue a career in medicine. Leandra is being presented a rose by Connie Little, Boys Varsity Cheerleader. Our senior boys varsity cheerleader, Miss Leandra Beth Robinson. Our senior basketball team member is Mr. Christopher Coleman. Christopher is the son of Jerry Neal Coleman of Millard and Elisa Simpson of Dry Fork. He is being escorted by his parents. Chris is an active member of the boys varsity basketball team and the FBLA. He plans to attend Eastern Kentucky University and pursue a career in law. Chris is being presented a rose by Stacy Miller, Boys Varsity Cheerleader. I'm not. Our senior basketball team member, Mr. Christopher Coleman. Our senior basketball team member, baseball team member, and JROTC member is Mr. Nathaniel Kilgore. Nathaniel is the 18-year-old son of Blake and Lori Kilgore of Bowling Fork. He is being escorted by his parents. Nathaniel is an active member of the baseball and basketball teams and Vicka. Nathaniel plans to pursue a career in the Navy. Nathaniel is being presented a rose by Shayna Bevins, Boys Varsity Cheerleader. Our senior basketball team member, Mr. Nathaniel Kilgore. Our senior basketball team member is Mr. Robert May, Jr. Robert is the 18-year-old son of Josie McCoy and Robert May of Lower Pompey. He is being escorted by his mother and his grandfather, Ray Conway. Robert is co-captain of the boys' varsity basketball team and is an active member of the VICA. He plans to attend Mayo Technology Center and plans to pursue a career in auto body repair. Robert is being presented a rose by Lacey Thacker, Boys Varsity Cheerleader. Our senior
senior basketball team member, Mr. Robert May, Jr. Our senior basketball and baseball team member is Mr. Robert Stewart. Robert is the 17-year-old son of Jerome and Tilly Stewart of Marbone. He is being escorted by his parents. Robert is treasurer of VICA and the student council and is an active member of the teen club. He is planning to pursue a career in the Navy. Robert is being presented a rose by Miranda Woods, boys varsity cheerleader. Our senior basketball and baseball team member, Mr. Robert Stewart. Senior night activities. Thank you and please stay and enjoy the game. I think they really will. I don't think they ought to. They might. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another TV5 Intermountain Sports presentation. Tonight, I'm Bill Bevins, joined by my son, Bill Wesley Bevins, and as always, we've got the good doctor man, Dr. Don, behind camera, and we're bringing you more exciting high school basketball action from the Millard High School Gymnasium, where tonight, Dr. Don, it's senior night, and we've been watching those uh, senior uh, people uh, come in here and get ready to graduate this year, uh, their final year, they, and they've had a pretty good season. And Bill Wesley, tonight we're doing a ball game, senior night up here, between uh, our alma mater, your alma mater, and mine too, uh, the Millard Mustangs and the Phelps Hornets. Millard's comes in here, I believe, with an overall record of something like four and 11, I believe it is, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know the uh, exact record of Phelps this year, but Millard got uh, got started out pretty slow, but uh, you know, they've won two or three games here lately. Well, it's first of the year. I think it was like the first game they played Phelps over at Phelps, and one of their main players, uh, Jared Aggins, he ended up with an injury in that game, and he sat out for like two or three weeks, so that hurt him, and that helped uh, for their slow start, but once he's come back, they've uh, picked it up a little bit. And Jared, just a real good uh, three-point shooter. We've seen him uh, come along, as you say, uh, since he came back. And uh, also, they've got some more seniors on there graduating this year. Uh, Chris Coleman, who uh, plays a starting guard for this uh, team, and uh, one of the captains, I believe, Nathaniel Kilgore. Nathaniel's having a pretty good year this year. Yeah, uh, this Nathaniel's last year, he knows it's time for him to step up and be a leader on this team. And uh, he's not hes not the only senior they got. They got uh, Robert Stewart and Robert Mayer also, two of Seniors they got. I think they have four on this year's team. Uh, 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 celebrating their senior night tonight. Of course, uh, Phelps comes in here, coached by James Mercer, and uh, I believe uh, you may have uh, gone to college maybe a year or two with his son, Matt, who's, I saw Matt helping him on the B team down there earlier, Bill Yeah, I saw Matt too, yeah, we went to school together. I think he graduated already, but I'm still over there, so I don't know. I need to talk to him, though, catch up with him. Okay, let's uh, try to get a Maybe Joe Marston in here and Bill Wesley. See if you can find Matt, maybe, and uh, find out that record and tell Joe to come in here. Okay. And uh, just hang right with us. We're trying to find uh, Joe Marston, the uh, coach of the uh, Miller Mustangs, Dr. Don. There he is. Hello, Joe. All right. Joe Marston, uh, the head coach of the Miller Mustangs. And uh, Joe, we've, we've been watching these seniors get ready to graduate up here. It's senior night. Pretty good crowd you got up here for senior night. Yeah, we've got a good turnout. Uh, consider, you know, we're out of school today and stuff, so we're real pleased with the, with the crowd. And uh, they're having, you know, a festive occasion here tonight, having their, honoring our seniors 
have participated in things throughout the years, and I think they've done a real nice job, and they've worked hard, and they've got a lot of people to be commended for that. Hopefully we can play real well for them. Good. Joe, let's talk a little bit about tonight's game before you get ready to start here. Of course, uh, you're coming in here, I believe, overall record of 4-11. Got started out a little bit slow, but the uh, last few games you've, you've come on, and you won a game or two down there at the uh, I'll wait. It started pretty slow. Around, around Christmas time, it started to gel a little bit. We had a you know, little step there where we won about four out of five and playing pretty well. And uh, we're just hoping you know, to keep continue with that and uh, get everything uh, in gear so we're at tournament time. We're playing our best basketball. That's what it's all about anyhow. So, uh, you know, hopefully we can continue with that tonight. Uh, Chevy Valley gave us pretty good going over over there the other night, which, you know, they're, they're a pretty good basketball team. So we should try to shake that off. and. Uh, Maybe, you know, might have been a step backwards, but we'll try to shake that one off and go on. I'll tell you what, Joe, that Chevy Valley team this year, they, uh, they may be surprising a lot of people. Of course, they won the WIMT Classic over there, big Clay County over there, and, uh, uh, you know, Rodney's just having a heck of a season with those kids this year. Well, yeah, Rodney does a great job with them, and, and they've got some good kids, and uh, the thing that impresses me is, uh, you know, the talent they've got shooting that ball and then, you know, still the, the intensity that they play with. And, you know, sometimes... Uh, kid that's real talented don't want to play with that kind of intensity and I think that's the thing that probably separates them and they're to be commended for that and how hard that they played and uh, uh, you know hopefully you know, we're all not going to bow down and just, just concede the thing to him but he, he's got a very good ball club. Joe, I thought one of the things that may have hurt you earlier in the season from my observation, one of, you, one of your players, a real good shooter, Jared uh, Atkins, uh, went down with a wrist injury and uh, he's back and uh, he's played uh, three or four good games since he's been back for your squad. Jared shoots the ball real well, and yeah, we, he was sorely missed in the games that he was out, and he's, he's had some fine, fine shooting ball games since he's come back, and uh, been you know a little bit up and down, and we're trying to just get him stabilized and get him consistent night every night out, and uh, uh, you know get him back into the mix where everybody's used to playing with uh, with him. We've had a couple of lineup changes that uh, enable some younger players the opportunity to play and help us off the bench a little bit, give them some experience. But now we'd like to get to the point that we get them all to jail together and learn the roles and get everything in gear for a tournament run. Joe, tell us uh, a little bit about this Phelps team. Of course, uh, J James over there, uh, James Mercer coaching, and I believe his son Matt may be helping him this year. What, what can you tell us about the Phelps squad this year? Well, they, they're going to play real, they're going to play real disciplined, and uh, James does a real good job with them, and you know, like I say, he's got Matt on his sideline there. He's got a real good staff, and he's got Keith Hall on there to help him, so... Uh, they're, you know, they're going to be real organized and really hard to play against. He's got pretty good size and pretty good guard play. Uh, I know he had an unfortunate injury the other day with a kid that was playing real well for him inside. Bobby Little hurt his knee, I think, probably during that uh, All-A Classic. I know he's having some trouble out of it during the Paintsville game, and I think he's lost him, and I think that's uh, uh, going to slow him down for a while because he was a real good player. But uh, they've got some other players that can step up and play real well for him. So, uh, uh, you know, they're going to be a handful. We've done played them once over third place. Uh, we've got a real big kid inside in the hall that's going to present us with some matchup problems. So, uh, you know, we're going to have to play real well. We're going to have to do some things, uh, uh, maybe even some things a little bit different than what we've done first part of the year to contain them on the inside. I understand that was a pretty close game over there at Phelps, maybe it was something like a three or four point game uh, come down to the final. Yeah, I think they won out with about three and uh, both teams shot the ball pretty well over there. I think it's up in the 90s, you know, 90s, 90, 93, 80 some, you know, high 80s, low 90s, and uh, uh, which you know shows you that points can be put on the board. I don't know if that was our best defensive effort or, or anything, but uh, there's a lot of talent in both clubs, and hopefully we'll see who's, you know, what club has improved the most here tonight. Well, Joe, it's getting pretty close game time. Good talking with you. Good luck in that game. Thank you, Bill. All right. All right, Don, uh, Joe Marston, the head coach of the Miller Mustangs. Let's go ahead and take a break, and we'll bring it back uh, for the uh, starting lineups of tonight's game. This is Intermountain Sports. Hello once again, Bill Bevins and my son Bill Wesley Bevins. We're bringing you tonight's high school basketball game between the uh, Miller Mustangs and the Phelps Hornets. It's senior night up here, Dr. Don, tonight, and we're glad uh, we could bring our cameras up here. Uh, Bill Wesley. Glad uh, you could join me for tonight's broadcast. First time I've been on here quite a while. It's uh, good to get back into the round ball action again, calling of it. And uh, let's talk about this game a little bit. The Miller Mustangs come in here for an 11, taking on uh, James Mercer's Phelps Hornets 5-7. and seven. They've played a real close game on there uh, up at Phelps. I think it's something like a three or four-point game. 
Uh, yeah, I didn't get a chance to go to that game, but I've heard a lot of people talking about it, and they said it was a very close game, so we should have a good match up here again tonight. All right, we're getting ready for the starting lineup, so let's turn it over to our PA and answer At this time, would you please rise for the singing of our national anthem by Miller High School senior, Tanya Dameron. Can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so Streaming and the rockets make the bombs bursting in air. through the night, that a flag was still there. Oh, say does that star spangled banner and Spot number 21, Josh Daniels. At four, number 24, Steve Rain. In the other four spot, number three, Cody Reynolds. And at center, number 50, Jordan Hall. The horns are coached by James Mercer and assisted by Matt Mercer, Keith Hall, and Mike Hamilton. Starting lineup for your Miller Mustang. At guard, number 11, Jared Atkins. In another guard spot, number three, Adam Coleman. In one more guard spot, number 25, Robert Stewart. At forward, number 40, Robert May. And in the other forward spot, it's the Crow Man, number 23, Nathaniel Kilgore. The stains are coached by Joe Marston and assisted by Kevin Justice and the Colonel Tom Hartley. All right, thank you, Jason. Uh, of course, uh, Jason Brown giving those starting lineups for both squad. And uh, Jason, uh, of course, you played ground ball up here uh, when you played at uh, high school ball up here with Jason. Pretty good fellow, Bill Wilson. Oh, yeah, Jason was a senior when I was a freshman, so I've got some pretty good uh, time in with him. I know, I know how he is. You know, he's all right guy. All right, we're getting ready. Got uh, action. It'll be number three stepping in there. That'll be Cody Reynolds. And I believe Nathaniel Kilgore uh, will tip it off for the Miller Mustangs. Miller moving from our right to left. Once again, I'm Bill Bevins, joined by my son, Bill Wesley Bevins, for the uh, color commentating tonight and the doctor man behind the camera tonight. And, of course, I'm talking about the one, the only Dr. Don Bevins. All right. Tipped up, and we're underway. And let's see what kind of defense Phelps comes out with. Long three by Jared Aggins, one of the uh, pure shooters. If he gets on a hot streak, he can drill them. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think that was a two. He had a toe on the line, they said. All right. They gave him two instead of the three. So, uh, Miller draws first blood here. Two to zip. We're just underway. Tipped out of bounds. And uh, he'll go back over to the boys in blue, the Phelps Hornets. Let's see, I believe, uh, let's see what kind of defense Miller comes out with, Bill. Let's just start this game. And this one foul underneath as the big boy scores underneath. That's Jordan Hall. Uh, they, got that, they got that foul on Robert Mays. 
So that'll be uh, May's first and team's first here, and we're all tied to a piece. Just underway, 7.37 left to go in the first quarter. Reynolds is free throw, no good, too hard, rebounded by Kilgore. And one thing I've noticed about Nathaniel this year, Bill, we'll see, uh, they list him, I think, about six feet, uh, and uh, he really gets up there for that size. Oh, yeah, he, he knows how to use his body and put a body on somebody and block out, too, so that helps. He does a real good uh, job rebounding. Looks like Phelps coming out in a little, maybe he looks like a little 3-2, and Jared Atkins off the left side, no good, rebounded by the Hornets. Quickly across the timeline. That's Stiltner out there. One of the guards for this team. Miller's coming out and ran the man this trip down. And and we talked to Joe Marshall in her uh, pregame, Dr. Vaughn. They've been playing some pretty good ball lately. Uh, overall record of 4-11, and the shot was missed. And here's Jared Aggins, he thought about it. And turnover, stripped away in there by Reynolds, I believe. And good defense by these Miller's Mustangs as he's swarmed in there. And quickly, just like that, a foul on, uh, I believe that number three, Cody Reynolds. Is that right, Bill Wilson? The yeah, they got that on Cody Reynolds. They got, uh, play was got a little bit sloppy that trip down the court. We're still tied to a piece. Both teams need to take care of the ball a little bit better to start this game. Phelps coming out in... Looks like a 3-2 is uh, Kilgore had it on the left side, didn't want the shot. They do a good job getting the ball inside, and Kilgore may have forced that one a little bit, though. Oh, they got and an offensive foul. Offensive fouls, uh, elbow thrown in there by Jordan Hall. That, that's his first. That was a strong rebound, but you can't bring, can bring those elbows around. I tell you what, I want to be in the uh, arm length of his uh, elbow. B big kid in there. Balls worked underneath to beautiful pass in there to Stewart. Missed. And I believe we've got a whistle and foul underneath. Nathaniel Kilgore over the back. That's his first. That's two on Miller. So we started off kind of fast, and it slowed down a little bit. Uh, about six minutes left to go in the first quarter, and we're still all nodded at two apiece. This is senior night. We're bringing you uh, high school basketball action here on uh, Friday night. Of course, tape delayed basis. It'd be uh, Saturday, and uh, balls put up by Phelps Hornets. It wouldn't go. That was uh, Jordan Daniels in there taking the shot. Here's Adam Coleman. Adam Coleman, a good shooter for this squad, too, Bill Wilson. He puts up a long three. Missed it, though. Rebounded by Hall. Long pass down side to Reynolds. He loses it. Kicked in there by Jared Aggins. Jared might have got away with one there. That was a good long pass down court. Here's Adam Coleman. Long three. Right by side. Good. He's right her down. Make it five to two to Miller Mustangs. And we talked about that a little bit earlier, Bill Wilson. If Adam uh, Coleman gets open, uh, he can drill it if he gets on a hot streak. Oh, yeah. Uh, Adam, he's going to have a good career up here, Miller. He's just a sophomore right now, so he's got two more years to play after this. Of course, uh, we're talking about senior night. Some of these seniors up here for these graduating Mustangs, of course, Nathaniel Kilgore, Chris Coleman uh, is a senior, uh, Robert May and Robert Stewart. And they've got, uh, I believe, three senior cheerleaders on that squad. Uh, yeah, Brandy Aggins and Leander Robinson and... Misty Little are the three senior cheerleaders. Chris Coleman setting this game out on, uh, he had some uh, problems with uh, team or something. I believe he's setting it out for some discipline problems. Okay, so Chris Coleman, one senior, is not playing then. And that was uh, number 50 in there. Jordan Hall scoring for uh, Miller. Jared Aggins long three too hard that time. Ball was thrown out of bounds. They say last touch by the Mustang, so it'll uh, belong back to the Phelps Hornets, the boys in blue here for tonight. And a good crowd on hand, Bill Wesley, for tonight's game up here. Oh, yeah, they got just about every day. The bleach is full up here. They got in a lot of people tonight. That was Stiltner out front handling the ball for this squad. They go down underneath to the big boy again, number 50. That's Jordan Hall, and I know that's a, how many's he got? He's got six now. He's carrying Phelps on his back. He's got all six points. 
So make it six to five or score. Robert May inside, shot, got it. And that's where he's pretty effective, though, let's see, when he penetrates inside. Anytime he can take it to the goal, he increases his chances a whole lot. Miller looks like maybe in a maybe a little one three one now. Mixing that defense up into the big boy again. How they've done that four times and he scored all four times in there. They're going to have to do something to counteract that, Bill. They, they have to find some way to stop that or he'll hurt them all <laughs> night long. Jared Aggins, left side, left all alone, mi missed it. That's two he's missed from there, and ball just thrown away by the Phelps Hornets. Jared's missed a couple of them out there, but now if he gets hot, he can uh, he can fill it up from there. I think Phelps got him just a little too big of a hurry to get that fast break started that time. What do you think uh, the Miller Mustangs and Coach Joe Marson may have to do to counteract that down there, Bill Wilson? They're getting the ball inside to the big boy, and he's just using the glass. He, he's not four feet away from the basket when he gets it. Well, they may have to start double teaming when, as soon as he touches the ball. And Stewart, long shot out there, no good. And a whistle and a foul, I believe, will go against the Miller Mustangs on the rebound. They got Jared Adams with that. That'll be his first. That's three on the Mustangs. Miller stays in that 1-3-1. One, one. Still mixes that defense up a little bit on him. Let's see what they do this trip down the last three or four times. They've got the boy into the big boy hall. They may have to start double teaming as soon as the ball touches his hands. He's got it again in there. Shot. This time he dishes it out. Shot put up, no good, too hard off the back of the arm. Rebounded by Nathaniel Kilgore. Good, strong rebound in there for the senior. Out to Coleman. Nathaniel Kilgore with the long three. They're getting some good looks at it. So far, they've just made one of them, though. Well, they've had some good looks, no doubt about it. They just got to start knocking that shot down if they want to win this game. Three minutes left to go in the first period. We're, and a good close game, low scoring affair, but uh, a close game, eight to seven in favor of the Phelps Hornet. They lead it by one. Shot put up. Good by number four. Let's see. Bill Freeman in there. Phelps has come out in a two three now. Miller seems to be uh, willing to settle for the outside shot right now at this point, too. All right, that was Randall McPeak taking a long three, and Adam Coleman a long three. He missed it. <laughs> They're firing him up from out there, but uh, so far they've uh, just not hit him. Shot put up and in by McGuire. Brandon McGuire down low. We may be uh, experiencing some technical difficulties. Shot put up by May. No good. Just working the ball out front. 133 left to go in the first period of play and almost stripped away by Adam Coleman but retained in there by Keith Stiltman for the Phelps Hornets. They're looking for the big boy down low. Phelps just working around the top of the key. Long three-pointer put up, no good, wouldn't go and it They'll let it go out of bounds. Ball will belong to the, to the Miller Mustangs. They trail this team uh, by five right now, 12, two, seven, one, 11. Left to go in the first period of play. The last couple times down the court, uh, Miller's done a better job of keeping the ball out of uh, Hall's hands down there. Yeah, McGuire got in there for a score while ago. Nice pass by uh, Adam Coleman into Robert Stewart again. And we, we talked on it earlier, that's where he's affected. If they get the ball to him, uh, he probably needs to penetrate a little more. Look, look to score a little more. Yeah, he's pretty good at taking the ball to the basket. A lot of times he can score that way. Phelps Hornet shot out of the corner for Bill Freeman, number four. So that's, I think that's he's his come, second basket. Yeah, he's come off the bench to score four in the first quarter. 14 to nine are score. Here's Adam Coleman, top of the key. He looks into the kill court, kick it back out. Jared Atkins, long three, no good. A little bit too hard 
Here comes the Phelps Hornets. They get across. Nice pass in there to number 24, scoring that's Steve Lane. Well, that was a nice pass. That was a good fast break, too. Sure was. Good transition. Textbook style. 16 to 9, and I believe Miller to play for one here. We've got seven seconds left to go in the first quarter. Adam Coleman looking at shot, and he throws it away. Just getting a little bit sloppy there. And long shot put up. No good at the buzzer. So we've completed one with a score. The Phelps Hornet 16. The Miller Mustangs 9. You're watching high school basketball right here on your Intermountain Sports Network. More than ever, life is full of change. And sometimes change is good. Same with your cable package. By upgrading to streaming with Gearheart TV, you get a ton of features and content. That's entertainment for everyone, no matter what they watch or how they do it. Change doesn't have to be a challenge either. Streaming with Gearheart TV is easy to use on the devices you already have. Ready for change? Contact Gearheart TV and make the switch to streaming today. When life's unfortunate events happen, we sometimes see people at their worst. That's why we make it our goal to give them our best. If you've been involved in an auto accident, have a workers' compensation, social security, or SSI claim, you need an attorney with proven results. You need John Earl Hunt. I'm attorney John Earl Hunt. I believe in the U.S. Constitution, and I support the American flag. I'm a country lawyer. I'd be honored to represent you in your case. I'll treat you right. I'll do the best I can to help you. All right, our score 16 to 9 as you watch uh, the uh, Millard uh, Mustang cheerleaders in action here tonight. I'm Bill Bevins, uh, bringing you the play-by-play, -play, and uh, got my son here tonight, Bill Wesley Bevins, uh, and Dr. Don on camera. This is senior night at uh, Millard High School, and of course the uh, Millard Mustang cheerleaders performing, and uh, I'd like to say uh, a real lovely hello to my young daughter, Shana Danielle Bevins, and uh, she's a freshman, and uh, she enjoys that cheerleading, bub. Oh, yeah, that's all she talks about all the time. <laughs> <laughs> all right, 16 to 9. Miller had some good looks at it, Bill Wesley, but they just couldn't get many drop down in that first quarter. Well, Phelps was dropping back in that zone and they're leaving the wings open, and so far, Miller has settled for taking that outside shot, and they haven't been hitting it so far, and they find themselves down seven points. What, the uh, what about the scoring there for the first quarter? Uh, score Phelps, Jordan Hall led them. He had eight in the first quarter. Bill Freeman come off the bench for four, and Steve Lane had two, and Brandon McGuire had two. And for Millard, Adam Coleman had three, and Robert May had four, and Jared Eggins had two. All right, we're just underway, second quarter of play. Phelps Hornets gets first possession. They try to get it inside, almost picked off by Kilgore. Phelps working the ball around, and bad pass, but picked up in there by Bill Freeman. Out to Stiltner, Stiltner. Obviously, uh, one of the playmakers for uh, Coach James Mercer's Phelps Hornets. Shot put up in there and good by one of the big boys, Steve Lane, in there scoring. I believe that's his second bucket for tonight. Yeah, that's his fourth point. He looked like he might have got hacked on that shot, too. Steve Lane, pretty good sized kid in there, and Miller, another turnover. Both teams are a little sloppy so, so far. Randall McPeak into the lineup now for these Miller Mustangs. Uh, I believe Randall's what, a junior? Uh, yeah, if I'm not mistaken, he is a junior this year. Here's Stiltner. He walks it across the timeline for his felt points. They look inside. Shot put up. And nice pass in there to Lane to... Uh, Hall and score another one for Hall. I believe that makes him 10 on tonight, doesn't He's it? got 10 so far already. He's eating Miller alive right now. <laughs> 20 to 9 or score. They're going to have to do something to stop him. Adam Coleman, another long three-pointer. They just can't get him to, can't buy one right now. And, and ball is thrown away. Picked that by Adam Coleman. Here comes the Miller Mustang. Nice pass by Kilgore in to May. He missed it underneath. That was a nice pass back with Daniel Kilgore in there, but uh, May just couldn't get it to go down for him. 20 to 9 or score. Phelps Hornets leads these middle Mustangs here early in the second period of play. Here's Lane inside. He's got a couple of buckets and a whistle on a foul down underneath. It'll go against the Mustangs. They got that foul on Nathaniel Kilgore with the hack. Fouls on Miller, number 23. That's going to be his second foul. 
Team four, Bob checks back into and the And that's four on the Mustangs this half. Wasn't a shooting foul, so uh, Phelps will have it underneath their own basket. They lead it 20 to nine over these Millard Mustangs here tonight. They try to find uh, the big boy Lane inside, but this time it's picked away by Robert May. Good defense by the Mustangs there. Let's see if they can make it count on the other end. You've got contrasting styles on defense going on here. Miller's playing man to man on their end, and Phelps is dropping back in a zone. But uh, Miller right now, uh, just too many turnovers right now, bud. Both teams are uh, having a little bit of trouble taking care of the ball so far. 5.47 left to go, in case you're just tuning in uh, to join us tonight. It's senior night up here. Uh, prior to the game, of course, uh, Dr. Don on camera tonight uh, filmed the uh, senior ceremony there. Shot put up by the Phelps Hornets, no good. Wild shot that time for uh, Reynolds in there. Here's Adam Coleman, one of the guards for the squad. Shot put up by May, no good. Goes back, tries to get his own rebound, but they say last touch by Robert May to go back over to Phelps. Phelps is playing some good defense inside once they get that ball in there and take it up. They're uh, getting a hand in the face. See Coach uh, Mershrep uh, yelling instructions to uh, his team down there. Here's Daniels with it. Out front to Stiltner. 12 foot jumper put up and a good bank shot in there for number 21. That's Josh Daniels and pretty jump shot by Daniels. Well, that was a nice pull up. And about 12 feet and he just has uh, the old saying goes, just kissed it off the glass. Phelps is still in their zone. Uh, I guess Miller's going to have to hit a few shots to bring him out over to left set back in it all night long, it's looking like. The Kilgore missed about a six-footer, got his own rebound, put it back up, and couldn't get it to Nick. And we've got a jump ball. Good jump defense ball by Nathaniel Kilgore that time. And he just reached in there and grabbed a hold of it and uh, got a jump ball called. Tell you what, these Miller Mustangs are trying hard, but right now the, 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 the shooting percentage, we don't have it, Bill Leslie, but golly, it's supposed to be, it's got to be way down, and there's a nice shot inside by Nathaniel Kilgore. 22 to 11 are score, 423 left to go. That's the first two points Miller scored this quarter. So Phelps has played some good defense. And there's a three uh, point shot out of the corner for J Josh Daniels scoring. And quickly, Joe Marson, I started to say he needed a timeout like uh, old Dickie V would say, Dick Vitale, Bill Wissey. Uh, of course, uh, Dr. Don, you may not know this, but uh, Bub got to talk to Dick Vitale the other night down at uh, Kentucky. Uh, Went down and saw the uh, Cats beat uh, the number four team in the nation, uh, the Tennessee Volunteers. He uh, talked to Dick Vitale, uh, uh, got his autograph, talked to him down the courtside the other night. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, was, that was a nice game, but Kentucky seemed to have went downhill after that. I don't know what's happened to him. As, uh, tell, tell us a little bit about Dickie B. He, he loves to say, you need a timeout, coach. You need a T.O., baby. Dickie B is crazy. He, uh, he's a good announcer, though. I love to listen to him. We enjoy it, no doubt about it. And 25 to 11. Uh, you know, the, let's talk about this one a little more. We'll just keep it right here, Dr. Don. We'll take a break here in a minute. And, uh, you know, Miller has had some good looks, and I see Coach Joe Marson getting after his team out there. They're going to have to pick the defense up a little bit. Oh, no doubt about it. They're uh, not stopping the ball once Phelps gets it in the lane, and they're just getting too easy looks at it right now. All right, 25 to 11 our score, 409. We're ready for more action here. Let's see if Miller can pick this up a little bit. They've got some good shots and good looks on the offensive end of the glass. They just can't get nothing to drop out now. Well, they've got some good shooters on their team, and they're getting, like, like you said, they're getting open looks, but they're just not falling right now. And the scoreboard shows the result of that. Here's Stewart with it. Looks like he's playing the point now for Coach Joe Marshall's Mustangs. May dives on the baseline, shot put up, got it, and that's what he's got to do more of. I know we've uh, talked about it a couple times tonight, but he is effective when he does that. Oh, yeah, no doubt about it. He can take the ball to the rack. 25-13. That's still in there, guarded by Adam Coleman. And it looks like Miller may have gone a little bit to a man-to-man -man here, bud. May have changed his uh, defense in that timeout. 
25 to 13. They get it into the big boy. He spins, shot put up, no good this time. They had him double team as soon as he had the ball that time. That's what they have to do. They're going to stop him. Looks like. And, and uh, we got Brandon Bevins into the lineup along with uh, Randall McPeak. And number 11, Jared Atkins. Replacing Aggins and uh, Robert Stewart, I believe. 315, left to go. Nice pass inside to Kilgore. Kilgore, four foot jumper, got it. Nice job there by the Mustang. Well, they got the ball inside that time. They were able to penetrate the zone and get a shot inside instead of settling for the outside jumper. Good job by Adam Coleman. Good assist by Adam Coleman into uh, his senior uh, partner in there, Nathaniel Kilgore, who put it up and in. And rebounded by Kilgore. So Kilgore doing it on both ends right now. They got a three on two break. Nice pass in there to Adam Coleman, and that's the way to run the break. Oh, yeah, the kill will rough the rebound. He took it almost coast to coast and pulled up and a nice jump, jump stop and perfect bounce pass to Adam Coleman. Coach uh, Mercer takes a full time out, so let's go ahead and take our break, Dr. Don. We'll bring it back right here on Intermountain Sports. Now's your chance for a great deal on smoke and fast internet from Gearhart Broadband. Upgrade to the smoldering speed you need, up to one gig and add Plume Adaptive Wi-Fi to reach every corner of your home. Experience no lag gaming, your favorite music, web surfing, HD video streaming, and connect to the latest smart devices. If you're ready for an upgrade, call or click Gearheart Broadband for a great offer today. My family means everything, and I'll do whatever it takes to make sure they're safe in our home. I started with this, a whole home security system with 24-7 monitoring. We control our system from anywhere, and wherever I am, I can see my family's okay. You do anything to protect your family. Start with this, a smart home security system from Gearheart Security. Call or visit GearheartSecurity.com to learn more. Okay, our score 25 to uh, 17. We're about, uh, I think there's what, about three minutes left to go in the second period here. We're uh, during a timeout, and uh, Coach uh, Mercer saw something he didn't like because Miller got a couple quick scores, and he wanted to uh, talk to his team about something, bud. Well, the first trip down here, they penetrated that zone and got a nice easy shot inside, and then they got the rebound and took it out on a fast break. And I don't guess he liked the way Phelps got back on that break that time. I don't know. 2.43 left to go in the second period. Phelps will be bringing it to length of the court, moving from her left to right. Once again, I'm Bill Bevins, joined by my son, Bill Wesley Bevins, and the doctor man, Dr. Don, behind camera, up here at the Millard Gymnasium tonight. It's senior night. Phelps Hornets coming in here, the visitors here tonight. Long shot out front from Phelps, no good, and rebounded. By Adam Coleman over to Kilgore. Kilgore inside the lane. This is off to Mac Peak. Long three pointer. No good. Shot put up. But rebound by Adam Coleman. Shot put up. Left hand. Oh, that was a nice shot. Left hand. So uh, Miller cuts it to six. 25 19. 206. Left to go. Miller's cut into that lead here. I think they've got something like six or eight unanswered here. I'm not for sure. But they've done a good job cutting that lead down past couple minutes. Ball goes inside, uh, a little slack on defense that time as Steve Lane found himself all alone for the Phelps Hornet inside. Well, I'm not sure who that was, but somebody said a nice pick to get him up in that pick. And we've got a whistle and a foul on Phelps. It'll go against uh, Keith Stiltner in there. That's going to be his first. And it should be... Uh, I've got four for the team, but uh, Jason Brown and the PA announcer just announced three, so we'll keep a watch on that and see how many team fouls they actually do have okay, this half. So, so nobody really uh, actually close to the bonus here. We just got a minute and 42. They've let them play up here. Adam Coleman all along. Got this one. He's got five quick points. Is that their uh, second three tonight? That or is their third, third three. Third. That's Adam's second three. No, that, that is the second three. He's got the only two. That was my fault. I was looking at the scorebook wrong. 
Yeah, they gave Jar Jared Agnes a two on that first shot of the game, I believe. 27-22 yep. or score, so Millard pulls it to within five. And a turnover and a nice pass down court, and shot put up. Oh, couldn't quite go for Robert May in there. Here comes the Phelps Hornets in the transition game. Stiltner, shot put up, got it, but it won't count. I believe they'll wave it off. They got him for an offensive foul. As Mick Peak stood in there and took the charge that time. That's going to be his second foul. He's picked up two in the last minute. 27-22. Let's see if the Mustangs can cut into that lead a little bit. Outside, they work it into Kilgore. Shot put up, block, and a whistle and a foul on Reynolds. That's going to be his second. And that was the shooting foul, so Kilgore will go to the line for two this trip. I believe this may be the first free throw attempt of the game. This is the first free throw attempt for Millard, and Phelps has only taken one. Okay. Kilgore at the line, missed the first one. And he's had a little bit of problems from there. Good shooter, pretty good shooter though, but he's had some problems from the line. He's got a good form. He's just got to get that shot to go down. That one goes down for him, and Nathaniel doing a heck of a good job rebounding this year for this squad, though. We've lost him in the games we've seen him play, though. Oh, yeah, him and Robert May are the glass cleaners for this team, no doubt about it. Less than a minute left to go in the first half, 27-23. Phelps Hornets, the visitors here tonight on top right now. And a little bit of weave going on by these Phelps Hornets out front. Showing the three-man weave out there. <laughs> 33 seconds left, and they're holding it for one, obviously, 27-23. They lead it by four, and almost stripped away in there by Brandon Bevins. They get it into the big boy, Reynolds. He spins and blocks the stir, but he gets his own rebound, puts it back up at the end. Well, Miller's going to try to hold for the last shot now, no doubt about it, with just 10 seconds left. Here's Robert May, shot for that, no good, but a whistle and a foul with 3.9 seconds left to go. They'll get Phelps with it. See who they got that one on. I think they got that on Steve Lane, number 24. Fouls on Phelps, number 24, Steve Lane. You're right. That's going to be his first. Robert May to the free throw line, can't get it. So Miller's one of three from there. And that's one thing about free throws. In a close game, free throws can win or lose it for you, no doubt about it. We've seen it happen so many times. May's second one, good again, so we're 50% from there, two of four. 3.9 seconds, let's see what Phelps, they can get a shot off, and stripped away by Randall McPeak. Shot put up at the buzzer, no good. 29 to 24 score. Phelps leads it by five at the half. So uh, let's take a real quick break, Dr. Don, and we'll bring it back for some first half stats and talk about this one a little bit more. Right here on Channel 5, your Inner Mountain Sports Cable Network. this excited when they discover the joy of Gearheart TV. But it happens. It's kind of a thrill to see every channel in HD. Go back in time with Replay and Restart TV. Record to the cloud. And watch TV everywhere on any device with no set-top box. Your excitement may vary, but there's a lot to cheer about Gearheart TV. Available now. Visit MyGTV.com now to sign up.
When life's unfortunate events happen, we sometimes see people at their worst. That's why we make it our goal to give them our best. If you've been involved in an auto accident, have a workers' compensation, Social Security, or SSI claim, you need an attorney with proven results. You need John Earl Hunt. I'm attorney John Earl Hunt. I believe in the U.S. Constitution, and I support the American flag. I'm a country lawyer. I'd be honored to represent you in your case. I'll treat you right. I'll do the best I can to help you. My family means everything, and I'll do whatever it takes to make sure they're safe in our home. I started with this, a whole home security system with 24-7 monitoring. We control our system from anywhere, and wherever I am, I can see my family's okay. You do anything to protect your family. Start with this, a smart home security system from Gearheart Security. Call or visit GearheartSecurity.com to learn more. Time to School Gymnasium, Bill Bevins along with my son, Bill Wesley Bevins, and Dr. Don doing the uh, camera work up here tonight for your Inner Mountain Sports Network. And 29-24 halftime. Uh, what about the first half a little bit, bub? Well, Phelps got out to the big lead to start out with, and uh, Mill done a good job in the last few minutes of the second quarter cutting into that lead and making this a closer game at halftime where they're just down five now. I know they, uh, they trailed something like probably about uh, 11, up to maybe 11, 12 points and then uh, had a couple quick baskets and cut into it and started playing uh, a little bit better. They just had a, a lot of trouble uh, doing the uh, shooting thing from out front. <laughs> <laughs> the shooting thing. Yeah, uh, they got to get that going. If In other words, they couldn't get them to drop down. <laughs> it's the first time I ever, called, I ever heard it called that, the shooting thing. That was nice. All right, let's talk about uh, some stats for the first half. Okay, well, uh, Phelps Hornets, they ended the first half with 29 points. They were led in scoring by Jordan Hall, who started out the game real hot. He ended up the first half with 12. And uh, Keith Stillner had six. Uh, Josh Daniels had five. Bill Freeman had four. And Brandon McGuire had two. And once again, they had 29 points. And I think they had a total of... Six team fouls for that half. Uh, Millard ended up the first half with 24 points. They were led in scoring by Adam Coleman. He's got 10 so far. Robert May's got seven. Daniel Kilgore's got four. And Jared Aggins has picked up two on the first shot of the game, if I'm not mistaken. I believe that was Jared's uh, only two points, like you say. Uh, anybody in uh, foul trouble at all for Millard? Uh, Nathaniel Kilroy's got two, and they don't have anybody else with more than one. And for Phelps, Keith Stillner and Cody Reynolds have both got two. I'll tell you what, the way Miller has really shot the ball, I, I think they're uh, really pretty lucky, uh, Bill Wesley, just to be down by five here at halftime. Oh, no doubt about it. Anytime that your shot's not going down, then you have to pick it up on the other end on defense to uh, stay in the game and hope that eventually you warm up and the shots do start to fall. Okay, so uh, there you have it, uh, some stats for the first half here tonight, Dr. Don. So let's go ahead and take a break. And when we return, we'll be back to action with the third quarter play right here from Miller. Bill Bevins back along with Bill Wesley Bevins where we're getting ready for the uh, third quarter play. And we got Dr. Don on camera up here tonight for uh, exciting high school basketball action. And as we get ready, our score, once again, if you're just tuning in to us a little bit late, perhaps the uh, Phelps Hornets up here where it's senior night lead these Miller Mustangs by a score of 29 to 24. Uh, pretty good first half of basketball, Bill Wesley. I look for the same in the second half and uh, still anybody's ball game, obviously. Well, no doubt about it. If Phelps keeps playing the way they're playing, they're going to be right there at the end and have a shot. And if Miller can get some of those shots to fall, then they're going to be in the game at the end and they're going to have a shot to win it. So it should be pretty close to the second half. And uh, I believe we was talking with Joe Marshall in our uh, pregame interview. I, I think that was something like maybe a three or four point game earlier in the season. So uh, I'm sure he'd like to uh, make that one apiece between these two squads here tonight. Oh, no <laughs> doubt he's got that on his mind. There's something I got to say to somebody. I told uh, Miss Jerry Johnson that I would say hi to her, the band director for Miller. So, uh, Miss Johnson, I'm saying hi. She does a good job with that squad. They sounded pretty good. 29 24 as we're back to action. That's Stiltner. Out front for these Phelps Hornets. And it looks like Miller's coming out in a man to man and quickly into the big boy uh, Reynolds once again. That was Jordan Hall. Excuse me, Jordan Hall. 
And that's what they did so effective in that first half. Here's Adam Coleman. Long three-pointer out of the uh, right side, Beauty. Well, that's a good sign for Miller if they can get some of those to start to fall. But that's Adam's third three this game. 31-27, they did a nice job working the ball around there, and Phelps looking to get it inside. Stripped away by Robert May. Quickly down to Jared Aggins for the easy layup. Make it 31-29, and just like that, Miller's got it to within two. Oh, no doubt about it. That was a good fast break that time. They got the rebound and just looked up, and Jared was wide open. Nobody was nowhere around him that time. Good transition basketball. Deflected by Millard, so the ball uh, will be long. Back to the Phelps Hornets. Exactly seven minutes left to go in the third quarter under the score 31-29. Senior night from the Millard High School Gymnasium. I'm Bill Bevins, along with Bill Wesley Bevins. And uh, as, as always, we got the good doctor man on camera blocked in there. Nice block by Kilgore that time. Here's Adam Coleman on the break. He just throws it out of bounds. Uh, looked like that time he thought Aggies was breaking to the goal, and I believe Jared backed up. <laughs> I think he was thinking trifecta <laughs> on that time down. I think you're right. I think he, he, I think he wanted to go for the bomb. <laughs> he, saw, he saw exactly where that line was. I know where he was going to. 31-29er <laughs> score, 6.43 left to go. Third period of play. Phelps Hornets with the basketball. Long shot out front. Beauty in there for Josh Daniels scoring. That one's from about 21, 22 feet. That was a nice shot. They just left him open out there, and he just pulled the trigger on it. Nice pass in there to uh, Kilgore again. Long shot in there for Adam Coleman. He couldn't get this one to drop down, though. 34-29. Phelps leads it by five. So we just traded baskets here in the last half. And good nice defense. defense. Here's Robert Sturt into the lineup. Adam Coleman all alone. He thought about it. Nice move in there by Kilgore, but he's fouled in there by one of the big boys, I believe. That's Lane. Yeah, it looks like that's Steve Lane. That's, that's, that's his second. Number 24, Steve Lane is second. That's who they got it on. So Kilgore will go to the line. He'll have two. I believe that's the first team foul of the second half, though, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Kilgore shot up. Got it. Good form on that one, makes it 34-30. Millard's cut it to within four here. 554 left to go. Kilgore quarter. Two of three from the foul line. Shot put up. Got it. Drew iron, but it finally went down for him. Millard's got it to within three now. 34-31. I'm sure they'd like to come out here with the big W here on the senior night from the uh, home court. Oh, no doubt about it. I know how I felt on my senior night. It was, it was an unbelievable feeling. You know they have to be uh, fired up. And we've got a jump ball. It's high up out front. I believe James Mercer wanted to foul, but he didn't get the call. That was Jared Evans that reached in and got a hold ball that time. We got that jump ball called. Make it 34-31. And a turnover. Here comes Stilton with it. Got a shot. No good. Here comes Millard, moving from her left to right with it. He's just got to put that ball up over the front of the rim a little bit more on that one. Adam Coleman, a long shot out of the corner, wouldn't go. That's his shot, but uh, he, he missed the last two from there. Nice drive in there by Phelps Horn. Shot put, put up, wouldn't go, and whistle a foul down underneath. I don't believe it'll be a shooting foul, though. I believe they said they got that on the floor. It looks like it's going to be on number 25, Robert Stewart. His first That's going to be his first personal foul no, and Miller's first foul of the second half. Nobody got in the bonus in that first half, so they let him play 34-31. All belong to the Phelps Hornets. They'll be bringing the inbounds underneath their own basket. Miller's going to zone this trip down and Phelps taking it in under their goal. Phelps working on the top of the key. Miller switched back to man to man after they got the ball in bounds, though. Looks like. Shot put up by Daniels. Josh Daniels with a nice drive in there. There's Aggins in the corner. He thought about it. He's a good shooter from there, but uh, nice a little bit pass. slow night. Nice pass in there to uh, Randall McPeak scoring. Credit Kilgore with a beautiful pass in there, and Nathaniel's made some real good passes in there tonight. 
How he got that pass in there between all those hands of the Phelps players, I could not tell you. <laughs> Phelps trying to get it inside. Now they shoot the long three out front. Wouldn't go for him. That's Josh Daniels taking the long three pointer. Here's come Miller. I'm sure Miller would like to get uh, Jared Aggins more into the offensive flow of the game, Bill Wilson. Oh, not about, no doubt about it. He's one of their leading scorers, and uh, they definitely need his points. Here's Adam Coleman. Nice little uh, drive inside. Just kissed it off the glass from about four or five feet out. 36, 35, and we've got timeout as Miller's got it to within one. So let's go ahead and take a real quick break, Dr. Brown, and we'll bring it back right here on Channel 5, Intermountain Sports. More than ever, life is full of change, and sometimes change is good. Same with your cable package. By upgrading to streaming with Gearheart TV, you get a ton of features and content. That's entertainment for everyone, no matter what they watch or how they do it. Change doesn't have to be a challenge either. Streaming with Gearheart TV is easy to use on the devices you already have. Ready for change? Contact Gearheart TV and make the switch to streaming today. Thirty-six, thirty-five, and uh, Millard has cut this thing uh, to within one. Well, they played a good second half so far. They're uh, playing from behind, playing a little bit of catch up, not too bad. They're not down. They weren't down too much at the half, but uh, they've done a good job to uh, cut this lead down, and we're ready to go again. They've been down by as much as I think maybe ten or eleven early in the uh, early in the game, but like you say, they've got it to within one. Thirty-six, thirty-five, and. Uh, Pretty, pretty evenly matched squad, I would say, at this point. And a turnover against Phelps, and Miller comes out with Adam Coleman, chop it up, got it, counts the basket, and a whistle to foul. He'll go against the Phelps Hornets, and Miller takes the lead. Thousand number four, Bill Freeman. number four. That was Bill Freeman. That's going to be his first. Credit Kilgore with a good uh, takeaway down here, a good defense, and he. He led Adam Coleman on the break, and Adam just uh, went and put it up over the front of the basket. Can't connect on the free throw, though. 37-36. Miller on top by one with 3.30 left to go in the third quarter of play. Miller coming out. Down that man-to-man, -man and almost tipped away. Here comes the Miller Mustang. Good tip by Adam Coleman. Nathaniel Kilgore shot put up. Count it. Miller's picked up the defensive intensity down here on this end of the court. They were, uh, they've were they got some pretty active hands, looks like. 39-36, good job by Kilgore that time. And, and another steal by Nathaniel Kilgore. I believe this boy uh, won the play up here on his uh, senior night. He's a man on a mission, looking like to me. Brandon, or Jared Aggins for three out of the corner. And tell you what, Coach Mercer may need another timeout here. Oh, they need Jared's points. That's a big shot for him to get his confidence going. 42 to 36. Miller down by five at halftime. Now they lead it by six. Ball's kicked out of bounds, but it'll stay with the Phelps Hornets. That's, that's going back to their defense. Miller got a, a hand on the ball that time. They knocked it out of bounds. So they're going pretty good on the defense again now. And uh, Phelps wants a full timeout, so we're going to go ahead and take a break, Dr. Don. We'll bring it back. Right here, bringing more exciting high school basketball action. Nobody does it like Channel 5. Now's your chance for a great deal on smoke and fast internet from Gearhart Broadband. Upgrade to the smoldering speed you need, up to one gig, and add Plume Adaptive Wi-Fi to reach every corner of your home. Experience no lag gaming, your favorite music, web surfing, HD video streaming, and connect to the latest smart devices. If you're ready for an upgrade, call or click Gearheart Broadband for a great offer today. All right, 36 to 42, the Miller Mustangs are on top right now. And right now, these Miller Mustangs fired up a little bit, bud. Oh, yeah, no doubt about it. Coach Morrison must have gotten in their face and uh, 
got them a little bit more motivated in there in the locker room at halftime or something because they've come out and they've had a lot more intensity down here on the defensive end and that's transferred to the offensive end where they picked it up a little bit started shooting the ball a little bit better and uh, they were down five at halftime and come out and now they're up six with just two and a half minutes left to go in the third quarter. Sometimes these coaches uh, need to do a little bit of that motivating down there in the locker room, don't they? <laughs> uh, coach Morrison can do it now. I'll tell you, I'll play for him. I know. He's a good, he's a good coach. And big boy inside. That's uh, Jordan Hall scoring again. How many does he have? Uh, give me just a second. I can't add it up and watch the action all at the same time. I'm trying. Give me just a second. Now, I've got Jordan Hall with 17 right now unofficially. All right. The uh, leading scorer in the ball game. And here comes Millard. Here's Jared Aggins. Shot wouldn't go for him, but good transition basketball by Miller. They're wanting to get it out. I, I, I like to see that. Oh, yeah, they're a run gun team. They don't have anybody really that's very tall, so they have to run. And uh, right now, they're, in the, they're doing a good job getting the rebound and getting it out and starting the fast break. So I'd, say, I'd say Nathaniel Kilgore is probably the tallest one out there right now, about uh, really about six feet. Maybe six one. Let's see, we got Brandon Bevins checking in for Randall McPeak. Also checking into the lineup for Phelps is number three, Cody Reynolds. Replacing number 20. That's uh, Cody Reynolds checking into the lineup, replacing Stiltner, I believe. Jerry Daggins is uh, second free throw. Good again. Make it 43 38. Jared's picked it up this quarter. He's got seven so far this quarter, so him and Adam Coleman are leading the way. They can score in bunches. Well, we, we've seen them get cold, too, a little bit, but uh, they can score in bunches at times. Jared Aggins and Adam Cohen both have seven in this quarter so far. That was uh, Cody inside. Let's see. Libby Walk. Cody Reynolds got him with a turnover. Took one extra step. Too many. Made a good drive, but took that extra hop in there. 44-38 or score. Miller on top. Here comes Adam Coleman. And nice look inside to Nathaniel Kilgore. Nobody picked him up. Nathaniel Kilgore just laid it up in the end, 46-38. I believe they caught him, believe they caught him a little bit off guard that trip down. I think so. Here's Stiltner inside. He almost loses it. Turn around, bank shot. Got it. I tell you what, he worked for that one. I believe that's Lane. Is that Lane? Yeah, they got Steve Lane with that basket. That's uh, eight points for him so far on the night. Make it 46 to 40 your score now. I'm going by six. Jared Aggins out of the corner wouldn't go for him, and uh, Kilgore just dribbles it off his foot down there. Turnover, so 112 left to go in the third period. If you're just tuning in, 46-40. Miller leads the uh, visitors here tonight on senior night. The Phelps Hornets by six. Adam Coleman, he'll uh, pick up the defense against uh, Josh Daniels way out front. One minute remaining in the third quarter of play. One minute left to go into the big boy. Shot put up, got it. And I'll tell you what, he has been effective down there. So they're going to him. That's uh, something about basketball. If you got something that's working, you should keep going to it until uh, the other team has a way to stop it, in my opinion. Anyway. Here's Nathaniel Kilgore, shot put up, no good. Rebounded by Robert May, but if this one foul, he'll go to the charity strike. Let's see who they got that foul on. Fouls on Phelps, number 50, Jordan They got that on number 50, Jordan Hall. That's going to be his second. And I think that's the team's fourth for this half. Make it 46 42 or score. 37 seconds left to go in the third quarter. May's first free throw. No, in and out. Well, he is uh, one for three so far on the night from the foul line. So uh, let's see how he does on this one. Count the second. Make it 47 42. Miller by five with 37 seconds left to go. That's Josh Daniels doing the ball handling out front. Now guarded by Adam Coleman for the Miller Mustangs. Miller's sticking in this man to man. Into the big boy again. Chop it up. No good, but he'll go to the charity strike. Now, obviously, that has been the uh, Phelps strategy basically all night long, bud. And no doubt about it. Like I said, if you got something that's working, you got to keep going to it. They got that foul on Robert May. That's going to be his second and the team's second for this half. 
West Jordan Howell to the charity stack. I believe, uh, wasn't he there one, earlier? Uh, yeah, he made a shot and got fouled in the first quarter, and he got one free throw, and it was no good. So he's 0 for 2 on the night from the stop. He'll have one more, 24 seconds left to go, third quarter. Miller leads it by five, 47-42. Second one, rolls in for him. Drew a little bit of iron, but it went down for him. They pulled it to within four now. 24 seconds, let's see if uh, Miller holds it for one. And here's uh, another sophomore in there. That's Brandon Bevins. And a whistle on a foul on Cody Reynolds out front. They got Cody Reynolds for the reach in that time. That's gonna be his third personal foul. That's a five on Phelps for the second half. So two more and the Mustangs will be in the bonus. I think uh, the strategy may be to hold it for one here. They've got 15 seconds. Here's Adam Coleman. He finds Kilgore. Kilgore inside. Out front to Brandon Bevins. Brandon Bevins drives, shot put up, no good. Had a pretty good look at the basket, just couldn't get it to go down. And a whistle and a foul and an intentional foul on the thing of Kilgore. Pretty hard foul. He could have called it either way. I won't disagree with it a whole lot. Oh, no doubt about it. It was a hard foul, so uh, I guess in the referee's mind, he had no choice but to call an intentional. Make it 47 to 43, our score, and uh, he'll be going there for two. Also, uh, Phelps will have a ball out of bounds. First free throw up. Good for Reynolds. That's the first point. He's got the knot uh, by my square bit, unofficially that is. Give him two free throws to pull it through two, 47 to 45, and they can tie or go ahead here. Well, they've got two seconds to get him in bounds and get a shot up. Well, so plenty enough time to get a pretty good shot off. Oh yeah, two seconds, you got enough time to get in at least one or two dribbles before you get the shot. Uh, and pass, but stripped away by Miller. And we've completed three with our score, 47 to 45. The Miller Mustangs on top. Looks like it's going to be a pretty good eight minutes of basketball here to go. So let's go ahead and take a break, Dr. Don, while we've got just a little break in the action. Right here on your Intermountain Sports Cable Network, Channel 5. When life's unfortunate events happen, we sometimes see people at their worst. That's why we make it our goal to give them our best. If you've been involved in an auto accident, have a workers' compensation, social security, or SSI claim, you need an attorney with proven results. You need John Earl Hunt. I'm attorney John Earl Hunt. I believe in the U.S. Constitution, and I support the American flag. I'm a country lawyer. I'd be honored to represent you in your case. I'll treat you right. I'll do the best I can to help you. My family means everything, and I'll do whatever it takes to make sure they're safe in our home. I started with this, a whole home security system with 24-7 monitoring. We control our system from anywhere, and wherever I am, I can see my family's okay. You do anything to protect your family. Start with this, a smart home security system from Gearheart Security. Call or visit GearheartSecurity.com to learn more. Good job there by the uh, Miller cheerleaders uh, tonight up here from the Miller High School Gymnasium. Once again, I'm Bill Bevins, joined by my son doing the color tonight, Bill Wesley Bevins. And we've got the good doctor man wearing his uh, Rolling Stones T-shirt up here, established 1962. Looks good, Dr. Don, that red and white. All right. How many times did you say you'd seen him? About a dozen? 16 times. Oh, I'm sorry, I missed it four. 16. Do Dr. Dobbs says he's just seen the stone 16 times, so. All right. The music man, 47 45 as we're back to action. 7.50 left to go in the fourth quarter. Helps down by two and with the basketball. Uh, somehow, ball was stripped away, but picked up by Lane. He got the shot underneath, and he'll go to the charity strike. They got that foul on Robert May. Robert May. That's going to be third. his third. Team's four. It is number four on the team. Steve Lane at the line for Phelps shooting two. 
I'm, is this Lane's first trip to the charity strike? Yes, it is. He's not been there yet, but he knocked his first one down. He can tie it with this one. This one may be another one that may go right down to the wire. Second one, good. He ties it up, 47-47. 7.43 left to go in the game. Here's Jared Aggins out top, one of the good shooters for uh, Coach Marston's squad this year. Robert May, spin, shot, put up from 10, got it. That was a nice move by Robert May that trip down. Usually he doesn't shoot that far out, but that was a good spin move by him. Miller takes the lead by two right now. Just trading baskets, 7-19 left to go, fourth quarter. Been a good one into the big boy again, and he just, I'll tell you what, he gets it within about three feet, and all he has to do is turn around and just uh, kiss it off a of glass in there. Well, unofficially, that makes uh, 22 for him this game. And a nice shot on the other end for the Miller Mustangs by Adam Coleman. And uh, unofficially, I have him with 19 now, so those two, uh, Paul and Adam Coleman respectively are leading, are leading their teams right now. Good shot by Adam Coleman in there. Shot out. Here's Howell with the rebound for Phelps Hornets. Long three-pointer, got it. Count the basket for Keith Stiltner way outside top of the key. And Phelps takes the lead by one, 52-51. Ball stripped out of bounds, but it stays with the Miller Mustangs and they want timeout, they want a full timeout. No, let's, let's keep it here, Dr. Don. They're going to get just a 30-second timeout. He, he called for the full, and then he changed his mind. So 52-51, uh, Miller down by five. Their shooting has picked up. But uh, Phelps down here, I'll tell you what, they've been doing a good job getting it into the big boy, Jordan Howell. Oh, no doubt about it. Uh, like we said earlier, if it's working, go to it. <laughs> keep going to it until they stop it. And so far, Miller hasn't found out a way to stop it. And Jordan Hall's got 22 on him so far. I tell you what, this uh, big kid, I don't know what they listed him at, Bill Wilson, but I see him standing down there beside his coach, Jane Mercer. And of course, uh, I think Matt Mercer was what, about 6'3 or 6'4 or something? I'm not sure on that. Uh, he has to be at least about 6'3, I'd say. And he's got a big body on him, too. He's a big old boy in there. This game's starting to act like a boxing match going back and forth and back and forth. 52, 51 or score. Phelps Hornets on top. It'll be Miller's basketball. As we are back to action, ball comes in to uh, one of the guards now, Robert Stewart. He's one of the seniors up here. Four seniors graduating on tonight's squad. For the, uh, we're not graduating tonight. They'll graduate this year. <laughs> Here's Robert May. Nice spin move. Shot put up. No good, but a push on a foul. He went back to the same spin he did just a minute ago. Good move by Robert May. Jordan Hall. That's on Jordan Hall. That's going to be his six. third and Robert six line, on two. Phelps. You still got a little over six minutes left to go. If you're Millard, uh, you may uh, want to try that a little more. Maybe penetrate and maybe get the big boy in some foul trouble. Oh, no doubt about it. And uh, not just him, the fact that they have six fouls, the next one puts Millard in the bonus. So every time this time down, they get hacked or anything, they're going to the strike. 53 52. Millard takes the one as. Uh, the lead by one as Robert May connects on both free throws. That's Josh Daniels out front. With He's looking inside. Millard clogging that middle up right now. Doing a good job. A lot of movement out there right now by both squads. Lane shot put up. No good. Rebounded by uh, Robert May. And Stewart, nice pass to Kilgore. All alone. Count the basket for Millard. That's a nice pass by Robert Stewart. It's been a good game, an exciting one to call and watch. 55-52. That was Millard again trying to get out on a fast break. So uh, that's what they've done best so far this half. Here's the big boy, Hall. He kicks it back out to Cody uh, Reynolds. He's on shot, no good. Here comes Millard with it. They're trying to run again. Man. Looked like a good pass, but it was uh, thrown in there to Phelps. They kick it back out. Big boy Hall, and they got him for steps. So he's helping his feet a little bit. And uh, you got to give a little credit to Robert Stewart that time stepping in. He stepped in there and was going to try to take a charge on uh, Big Jordan Hall. He, he took the fall. They say they got him for steps, and we got Bill Freeman into the lineup now for Coach Post. Here's Robert Stewart. Adam Coleman, long three-pointer out front, no good. And rebounded by the big boy, Hall. Hey, 
55, 52, and both squads may uh, be getting a little bit tired now as, as Stiltner just walking it across the timeline for the Phelps Hornets. And walking out front, good shot in there for uh, Josh Daniel, but they say he's shuffling his feet. And I see Jordan Hall uh, taking a seat on the bench, and right now, with the big boy out, if you're Miller Mustangs, I think you have to capitalize right now, Bill Wilson. Uh, You've got almost five minutes left to go, and they've got Hall on the bench. No doubt about it. You know that has to make Coach Marshall breathe a little easier to see him go to the bench. Nice bank shot in there for Adam Coleman for the Miller Mustangs. 57, 52, 425 left to go in the game. Miller on top of the Phelps Hornets right now. And they try to find Lane and a whistle and a foul from behind. I believe they'll get Jared Aggins with it. They got that on Nathaniel Kilgore. And that's going to be his fourth personal foul. And that's five on the Mustang. So two more and the Hornets will be in the bonus. If you're Coach Marshall, you got to be careful with Kilgore now with four personal fouls. you got a decision to make whether to leave him in there and let him play, knowing that he's a senior and he's a senior night, a big game for him, or do you uh, go to your bench and give him a little breather for a minute? Especially now, I see uh, the big boy coming in, Jordan Hall for the Phelps Hornets. So, uh, you know, you got a little bit over four minutes left to go, and he's just one more and he's gone. I saw uh, Kilgore motion to... Uh, Coach Marston said, leave me in, Coach, said I need to play. Uh, Kilgore in there, shot, may have been a foul, no call, 57, 52, 357. And here comes Nathaniel Kilgore stole it, but it was stripped away from him and shot put up for uh, number 21, that's Josh Daniels, give him two on it, 57 to 54. Substitution into the lineup. Randall Let's see if we've got Randall McPeak checking into the lineup, taking a seat on the bench. It'll be uh, Robert Stewart. And Jared Aglins will be throwing it inbounds for his Millard Mustang squad. Like you said a minute ago, I think both teams are beginning to get tired, and it may just be a fact of who can hold on to and uh, keep running and keep gunning to keep, this, uh, keep the lead or regain the lead or whoever can come out on top. Here's, uh, Adam Coleman tried to get it to the kill goal on the side, but it was deflected out of bounds. It'll stay with the Miller Mustangs. They lead it by three. They got possession of the ball. Adam Coleman shot it up. I'll tell you what, this kid has played one heck of the second half. Oh, yeah, no doubt about it. That's two or three times that I know of here in the second half that he's uh, made a nice little move, a little fake or something, drove in there in the lane and got a nice little jump shot to fall. And he's just a sophomore. I believe he's a sophomore. The big boy, Hall, Jordan Hall, once again inside. So Hall's carrying the Hornets, <laughs> and we got Coleman carrying the Mustangs. Here's Jared Aggins inside. Adam Coleman, shot put up, no good on this one. And we got a whistle and a foul for Jared Aggins. I could see that one coming. He was reaching in too much. Oh, no doubt about it. And any time, uh, you, you put your hands straight up, they'll let you get away with that if you don't touch them. But even when you start putting your hands over and bending them over on to uh, the play with the ball, they're going to call that every time. Co I see Coach Joe Marson uh, up yelling to him, tell him to think a little bit about it. 59 to 56, still anybody's ball game. 256 left to go. Both teams have uh, six fouls this half, so next foul on either team puts the opposite team in the bonus. Ball comes into the lane, top of the key. One of the big boys, and they try to get it inside. Deflected, pretty good defense by Miller. Still their shot. Wouldn't go, but gets his own rebound put up. And ball is stripped away by Phelps Hornets, and a whistle on a foul on Adam Coleman from behind. And they let, uh, if you're Miller Mustangs, they let Phelps have too many looks at it. Uh, well, I believe they got two offensive rebounds that trip down, so uh, anytime you give a team three looks, then uh, their uh, chances of scoring definitely increase. 59-56, 2.35 left to go in the game. Phelps trying to cut into that lead. lead. Cody Reynolds, first free throw, missed it. Uh, before that shot, he had been two of two from the strap. Reynolds, 4-1. 
So uh, these free throws become more and more crucial going down the stretch here as we get closer and closer to the end of the game. He missed them both. Ball goes out of bounds. Good hustle defense by Cody Reynolds down there. Both teams right now, you know, uh, going to be under pressure defense, but they got to be able to take care of the basketball. Here comes the playmaker for Miller. Adam Coleman, the sophomore point guard for the squad. He makes a good move, but it, it goes right to his teammate. Jared Aggins out of the corner shot, no good. Rebounded by the big boy Hall. Here comes the Phelps Hornets. That's Stiltner on the run for his squad. I've not been keeping the rebounding stats, but I'd like to know how many rebounds Hall's got tonight, because I know he's been cleaning the boards down here on this end. He's got a bunch of them. They got that foul on Phelps. That's Cody Reynolds. That's going to be his fourth. So one more and he's gone. That's number seven on the team. So Mills is going to the charity strap for the bonus. That'll be Robert May stepping in there, in there one of the uh, seniors here tonight. Senior night. Miller Mustangs playing host to the Phelps Hornets. Free throw, got it. And Robert May, pretty good free throw shooter from there. Probably one of the better free throw shooters on the team, actually. Oh, yeah, he can stroke it, no doubt about it. Uh, in this game, it's looking like it may come down to which team can make the free throws at the end. 61-56, uh, so Miller pulls it out uh, by five here as uh, May connects on both free throws now. That'll be Stiltner in there, walking across the timeline. And we've got an official timeout on the court. And I believe we've got an official timeout as uh, Cody Winley may have a drop of uh, blood on him or something. Official stopped the play to check him. Coach Mercer looking at him down there. 61 to 56 for score. The Miller Mustang uh, over these Phelps Hornets right now by five, 159 left to go in the ball game. This is senior night. If you're tuning in to us late, uh, Dr. Dom uh, filmed the uh, ceremonies uh, pregame here. They're gonna let Cody and Reynolds stay in. So if you're Phelps with two minutes left and just down five, you've got plenty of time to come back. Oh yeah, no doubt about it. Still anybody's ball game. See what kind of defense Miller play. They get it into the big boy again. Hall's chop it up, no good, but he'll go to the charity strike. They got that foul on number four. That's Randall McPeak. That's going to be his first personal foul. And that's number eight on the team. So uh, these fouls keep adding up. You know as well as I do when the when the team gets to ten, that's not just. A the bonus, that's a double, double bonus. bonus. They automatically get two every time. And Jordan Howell can't connect on the first one. He'll have one more look at it. Second free throw, good this time. Make it 61-57, 145 left to go. Here comes Adam Coleman. He'll cross the timeline. He gets timeout for his well, We've got a full timeout, so let's go ahead and take a break, Dr. Don, and uh, we'll bring it back for the last minute and 43 seconds of tonight's exciting high school basketball action right here on Channel 5. Once again, our score is 61-57. Bill Bevins joined along with my son, Bill Wesley Bevins, and, uh, of course, uh, the doctor man, my brother, Dr. Don, on camera here tonight. And these Millard Mustangs, 61, the Phelps Hornets, 57. Bill Wesley, it has been a good one up here for senior night. Oh, no doubt about it. And uh, that's what all these fans come to see is a good, close, competitive game. You know, games where teams... Uh, 
get beat by double digits and a little bit more, you know, when uh, games are not so close, the fans don't get into it as much. And that's what I like to see is a good close game. Get the fans involved and get the band playing and get the cheerleaders going. And get everybody hyped up and ready to go. That's what this game's all about, in my opinion. That's what it's all about. And here we go. Ball comes in to, uh, and quickly a whistle and a foul on number 20. That is Thousand Keith Stilton. That's his third personal foul, and that's eight on the team, so Coleman will go to the line for the bonus. And uh, that may be uh, Phelps' strategy to put him at the line, but still, minute 42, I think it may be a little bit early to foul you. You're just down four. You've got almost two minutes to go. Oh, that's what I thought, too. Uh, no doubt about it, but it looked like that was their, definitely their strategy on that play. Because he came out and fouled him as soon as he uh, got the basketball. And may have been the wrong fella to foul as Adam Coleman has really played one heck of a second half. Second free throw, good. Got them both, 63-57. Millard up by six now, 138 left to go. Here's Stiltner out top. Gets it into Lane. Lane looks for the big boy, shot put up, got it. Steve Drew a lot of iron, but it went down for him. Oh, that's what counts. The ball went in the basket, and that's what Phelps needed that trip down was a score. Here comes Miller with. They've got to get it across the timeline, and a foul on number, I believe that'll go against uh, Daniels. Josh Daniels. Josh Daniels that's going to be his second, and nine on the team. So one more, and they're in the double bonus. Jared Atkins is going to the line for the bonus. That definitely seems to be their strategy as they fouled again without letting much time go off the clock. First free throw, good. And right now, that's hurting Phelps because Miller is connected on uh, three free throws in a row. Sometimes that can backfire on you, and sometimes it can work to your advantage. Oh, no doubt about it. Uh, it just depends on whether the free throws are going down or not. 64-59 as uh, Aggins missed the second one. 112 left to go into lane. Lane. Looks at the basket, no good. Gets his own rebound and kicks it back out to Stiltner for a long three. No. Rebounded by Cody Reynolds. Long three-pointer, and it went to the top of the basket and come down. And quickly a timeout, and I'll tell you what, that was close to being at the top, and if it would have, you know, that was a close call. I don't know whether it touched the top or not. Well, I know for a fact if it goes over, it's out of bounds. I don't know. That would look like he hit the top of the backboard and bounced back down and went in. Somehow it went through. It, it bounced off the rim, went to the top of the backboard, and somehow fell right down through. So count to three, 64 to 62. Any way it goes, it goes. That's what matters. The ball went through and counts as three points. 64 to 62. The Miller Mustangs on top by two. They will have possession of the basketball as we've got timeout on the court. And Dr. Don sends uh, some of these Miller cheerleaders here trying to get this crowd fired up and crap, uh, into it a little bit. Miller comes in here, overall record of 4-11. Uh, uh, got started out a little slow. Jared Aggins had the injury. And, uh, they picked it up. Uh, I think they uh, won a game down there and got to maybe to the uh, semifinal action, I guess, down there at the Class A. And, of course, uh, Phelps Hornets comes in here, five and seven, uh, coached by Jane Mercer from uh, over at the uh, Phelps area, and two pretty evenly matched squads, I would say, so far. Oh, no doubt about it. Like we said earlier in the year, they played a good close two or three-point game, and this one looks like it's going to be the same way, right down to the wire. Senior night up here. And of course, you know these seniors would love to win this one. Looks like it's going to come down to who's got ice water in the veins to make the free throws. 54 seconds left in the ball game. And ball goes out of bounds. They say last touch by the big boy, Steve Lane, in there. Phelps is putting that pressure defense on. Oh, they got the full court press going, no doubt about it. They're. Uh, Increased their defensive intensity 100% in the past in the last minute. Uh, they're trying their best to get the ball back, which is what they have to do considering they're just they're down two. I think Coach Joe Marston wanted a uh, foul on that as the Kilgore uh, went over into some of the seats down there, and we've got a turnover. They say he moved. I think Jared Aggins moved down there on the baseline. 64, 62, 49 seconds left. That could be the break that Phelps needed. And ball 
comes in to Hall. He scores the basket on the inbound play, ties it up, and he'll go to the charity strike for one. They got that foul on number four, Randall McPeak. They say that's going to be his second, and that's number nine on the team. So Jordan Hall, he's going to go to the line for one. He can get Phelps the lead with this foul shot. Make it 64-64. We're all tied up. Free throw, no good. Rebounded by Robert Mays. Here comes Miller. Now, if you're Miller, do you hold it, try for one, or do you go toward the basket? You've got 40 seconds, I think. And Joe Marson wants a timeout. He's going to talk about it. I think you may try to work this clock down, Bill. We'll see, you know, if you can take care of the ball, maybe to something like uh, maybe 12 or 13 seconds, maybe and then call another timeout if you can work it down. Well, anyway it goes, uh, in my opinion, they should hold for one. I don't know what Coach Marston's going to come up with. If you got the score or if you got the open shot, I think you have to take it. But if not, I say you hold the ball for one and shoot with maybe like three or four seconds left on the clock. That way, if it does miss, you do have a chance for an offensive rebound and a putback. Because uh, more games are actually won on the rebound and the putback than on the last shot themselves. I think you're right if you can take care of the basketball. But, You've got to be able to take care of the basketball yeah, first thing. That's the big thing. <laughs> You've got to hold on to the ball. You've got to have the playmakers to take care of the basketball. And the way Miller's have been shooting free throws, they've uh, been uh, shooting a pretty good percentage for, uh, from that uh, charity strike this second half. So, you know, uh, if you're Phelps, you, you come out. If you're Phelps Hornets, James Mercer, I'm sure, has told him to play good, aggressive defense. I don't know if he's told him to come out and foul or not, but I think you've you got to play good, aggressive defense. You've got 38 seconds. That's a long time to hold the ball, really, when uh, you got a man right in your face. Oh, no doubt about it. And if you're Phelps, if you foul, you got to look at it this way. So far, Miller's hit 7 of 8 from the free throw line in the fourth quarter. And so Miller is in the double bonus, aren't they? They will be in the double bonus on the next foul. So I think you may work this thing down if you've got another time out, call another timeout here and get your team set up for that last chance to go in with a win. They look like they're trying to hold it. Here's Adam Coleman, shot put up. No good. With 19 seconds left to go. And we've got timeout on the uh, court as uh, Steve Lane rebounded in there. May have took the shot a little bit earlier. I thought he was under some pressure over there. I don't know about the decision on that shot. Adam played a good game, though. I mean, he's been... Uh, the leading scorer for this squad. Oh, yeah, and if you're uh, Mustangs, I guess that's your number one option. That's who you have to go to. He's been carrying them all night long, but as you say, they may have taken it a little too early. They give uh, Phelps the ball with 17 seconds left to go in a tie game, so they've got their shot to win it right now. Absolutely. I thought they could. I'm like you. I thought they should have kicked that one out, but I'm sure Adam thought he had a pretty good look at it on that left baseline. And if you're Phelps this time down, let me ask you a question. Is there even any question who you go to? Not in my mind. You take it underneath. You get the ball underneath to the big kid. Either, either like, they've been going to Hall's their first option, and Lane has been their second option. Oh, yeah. And you know Coach Marson from Millard has got to tell his team to watch the inside. Robert, Ma Ma Robert, see Robert Mays guarding the big boy. That, I think they've got to confront him too. One in front, maybe one in back. We've got eight seconds left to go. Long three-pointer, no good. And we've got a timeout as Nathaniel Kilgore rebounded it and he called timeout as he was going out of bounds. So I'll tell you what, that's good thinking by Kilgore. I like that. I don't but know. You I don't, don't have about, much time left. I don't know about that rule. That's a rule they've been debating a lot lately is whether you can call timeout as you're going out of bounds or not. But so far, they've not taken that rule out. So he is allowed to do that, and he called timeout. But Miller's got to go to the length of the court, and they have less than a second left on the clock. So I don't know how much you can get yeah. done. If you had the ball right here at half court, you know, you could make a pretty good – Inbounds pass possibly get you a pretty good three-point shot here if you got the ball at half court, but you're right. They've got to come to the length of the court. Well, they've got seven-tenths of a second left on the clock, so they don't even have time to take a dribble. They've got to get the ball in and shoot it towards the basket, wherever they catch it at. And uh, 
I, is, I, you throw it the length of the court. I don't care what you do. You right here, you've got to throw it the length of the court. Yeah, no doubt about it. But it's, you don't throw it in bounds down here under Phelps' basket, whatever you do. It's looking like, uh, as Dick Vitale would say, uh, we may be having some OT going on. Oh, uh, and tell you what, Jared Atkins got a pretty good shot off at the basket of free throw. He had a good look at it. He drew a lot of iron, but uh, we're in overtime, so let's go ahead and take a break, Dr. Don. 64 for the Phelps Hornets, 64 for these Millard Mustangs. Big senior night up here at Millard, and what an exciting one we've got right here on Channel 5. Life's unfortunate events happen, we sometimes see people at their worst. That's why we make it our goal to give them our best. If you've been involved in an auto accident, have a workers' compensation, social security, or SSI claim, you need an attorney with proven results. You need John Earl Hunt. I'm attorney John Earl Hunt. I believe in the U.S. Constitution, and I support the American flag. I'm a country lawyer. I'd be honored to represent you in your case. I'll treat you right. I'll do the best I can to help you. More than ever, life is full of change. And sometimes change is good. Same with your cable package. By upgrading to streaming with Gearheart TV, you get a ton of features and content. That's entertainment for everyone, no matter what they watch or how they do it. Change doesn't have to be a challenge either. Streaming with Gearheart TV is easy to use on the devices you already have. Ready for change? Contact Gearheart TV and make the switch to streaming today. Okay, the Millard uh, High School Chilies performing their uh, B-I-C-T-O-R-Y. Spells victory for the Millard High, right? 64, yeah. 64, maybe, perhaps. 60, that, <laughs> right now, these, we're all tied there. That's what these fans <laughs> for the home team are hoping right now, but I see uh, some fans down here wearing blue and white that are hoping for the victory to go in the other direction. We've got four minutes left to go. Let's go over the foul uh, situation right now, Bill. Let's see some of the key players and uh, how many fouls they've got so far. Well, uh, and a nice score by Daniel Kilgore. He just tipped it down and Coleman wide open on the tip. Uh, Kilgore for the Mustangs has got four, so he's in major foul trouble. He's got to watch his hands. Robert May's got three, so he may have to watch it a little bit. For Phelps, uh, Cody Reynolds has got four, so he's got to watch his hands on defense. And Jordan Hall's got three, so those are the only people that are in major foul trouble. What about the other big boy down there at Lane? Lane. And Steve Lane doing a good job scoring for Phelps right now, Steve Lane. Uh, he's got two personal fouls, so he's not really in any trouble. He can uh, be pretty aggressive on defense. Nathaniel Kilgore way out top. Had a good look at it, but a long three-pointer. Wouldn't go for him, 66-66. 3-10 left to go in overtime. Here's Lane inside. I'll tell you what, this kid has been effective in there too. Oh yeah, no doubt about it. He's uh, starting to heat it up a little bit now. He's got first four points for uh, the Hornets in overtime. And a turnover against the Millard Mustangs. 68 to 66, 253 left to go in the ball game. Well, this is a time late in the game in the overtime where you have to be sure you take good care of the ball because uh, that can come back to bite you in a hurry right now. You've got to handle the basketball. 245 left to go in overtime. Phelps Hornets on top by two into the big boy lane. Blocked in there by Robert May this time. Good defense by May. Here's Miller with a nice transition basketball. Shot put up and in by Jared Aggins. 68 for Phelps. 68 for the Mustangs. That was a nice little uh, fast break that time. Had Adam Coburn leading the fast break and a nice little dish off to Jared Aggins for the wide open and layup. Tell you what, might have been, I think they missed one there. I think the boy walked. But before he got the shot off, but they say a whistle on a foul against Millard. They got that foul on number 15. That's Brandon Bevins. That's going to be his first and number 10 on the team. So from here on out, Phelps is in the double bonus. That's going to be uh, number 24, Josh Daniels, going to the line, and that was a shooting foul, so he's going to have two shots at it. Missed the first one. He'll have one more look at it. <coughs> Saw Coach Joe Marston up. I think he wanted steps called. 
Well, he may have taken the extra step, but if the fellas in the stripes don't call it, then uh, it doesn't go down. That's exactly mm -hmm. right. 69, 68, felt by one. 2.18 left to go in overtime. Bring you uh, high school basketball action right here on your Inner Mountain Sports Cable Network. Bill Bevins along with Bill Wesley Bevins and Dr. May and Dr. Don on camera. Jared Aggins out front. Over to Adam Coleman. He's looking for somebody to give it to. Two minutes, two minutes left to go in the ball game. Two minutes. Adam two Coleman minutes. shot put up, no good. Rebounded by the big boy Hall underneath. He made a nice cut through the lane and got a, got a good shot at it, but he just couldn't hit it that time. He had a good look at it, just wouldn't drop for him. Less than two minutes now, 69, 68. Phelps, I won him with the basketball. If you're Phelps, I would say you go back to either Lane or Hall because they're the ones that's been putting it in for you. That's Daniel scoring, so uh, Miller's down by three. Just kissed it off the glass. They find themselves down by three here in overtime. Minute 30 left to go. That's Adam Coleman out front. Looking for somebody to give it to. Here's Brandon Bevins. I believe he's a sophomore into uh, Stewart. Uh, excuse me, that's Robert May taking the jump shot. No good, but a whistle and foul to go, I believe, against the big boy in there. Hall. That's, that's his fourth. Hall, oh, that is his fourth. You're exactly right. And uh, Robert May is going to go to the line shooting foul. That'll be uh, two shots for him. First free throw wasn't good. Go for him. Usually a pretty good free throw shooter. This one wouldn't go. He'll have one more look at it. Well, May is six for nine so far from the strap. So let's see what he can do with this one. Second one, no. Missed everything right, and so our score remains 71-68. Might have been feeling the pressure a little bit on that one. <laughs> Could have. And a whistle and a timeout called in there by Keith Stiltner, number 20. 71 to 68. Minute nine left to go in the ball game. If you're Miller Mustangs, what do you do here? Well, you've got two decisions. Uh, you got one decision, two choices. You can uh, either D up, play some good defense, and uh, try to force a turnover or try to get a rebound off a missed shot. Or with like just a minute left to go, you can start fouling. It's just uh, whatever Coach Marshall decides his strategy is going to be. I guess that's what they're going to do. If he start, if he. I, I think you're right. I think you've got to play good defense, try for the steal. But you can't, if you're Millard, you can't let this clock run down too long before you start putting them at the line, though. You, you're down three. You've got to have the basketball. Oh, no doubt about it. Um, if if uh, Phelps gets the ball in and they start running time off the clock and Millard can't, can't get the steal and they see that Phelps is not going to shoot it, then they're going to have to foul. They have, they have no choice at that point. I think you play good aggressive defense here for about uh, 10 or 15 seconds. See if you might could come up with a steal. Then maybe putting them at, think about putting them at the line. Still got a minute nine left to go in the game. Miller down by three, 71 68 to this Phelps Hornet squad. Let's see what uh, Coach Mercer has told his squad here. Ball comes inbounds to Stiltner back there. He's guarded closely by Adam Coleman. Helps up by three. One minute, one minute the first Less than a minute now. And ball is tipped away. And they forced the turnover. By the Miller Mustangs. That's Jared Aggins. Shot put up. Got it. So good defense by Jared Aggins right now. Miller to within one. Here comes Phelps with it. Across the timeline. 43 seconds. They're looking for the big boy inside. Here's Lane. He's been affected from our shot. Put up. Got it. I'll tell you what. This kid is good. Oh, no doubt about it. He's got six here in overtime to help put them up. Jared Aggins, long three-pointer. Might have rushed it a little bit. Jared Aggins. And he connects on the three out of the corner. We're all tied. 73-73. 20 seconds. And I see Coach Joe Marshall. I believe they wanted a timeout. Let's see what we've got on the court. No, no timeout. They stopped the action. Here comes Phelps. 
Well, it 19 looks like seconds. It looks like Phelps is going to try to call a timeout on that one, but they may not have any timeouts left. I don't know. But uh, looks like they're going to play it with 19 seconds left to go. Tie game in overtime, so let's see what happens. That'll be Stiltner. Guarded in there by Adam Coleman. We've got 10 seconds. Long three-pointer shot put up. No good. The big boy Hall rebound. Shot goes out. It go. It belongs to the Miller Mustangs. They've got four seconds to work with. Joe Marston wants timeout. Folks, don't go anywhere. We're going to stay right here. Like I said before, nobody does sports like Channel 5. Nobody. We're right here doing it. 73-73, Miller Mustangs. And I'll tell you what, Bill Wesley, this is the best one I've watched up here in quite a while. You had some good ones up here when you played, but this has been a good one too. Oh, no doubt about it. This is uh, the what some people up here like to refer to as the barn. <laughs> and uh, right now, we've got a barn burner going on. Sure do. Closest game I've seen here in a long time. 73-73, I'll tell you what. This, good chance this is going in double the time, but They've got four seconds. seconds. You've got four seconds. If you miller, you've got time for a, a, a pretty good shot. You've got some uh, fast players out there, Adam Coleman, some good shooters, Adam Coleman, Jared Aggins, Nathaniel Kilgore. You've still got time for one. You've got a chance to win this right here. Oh, no doubt about it. If you remember, at the end of regulation, they had left, less than a second left to go and had to take it to the length of the court, and they got off a good shot then. They just happened to miss it. So now, with four seconds left, you've got a little bit more time. Uh, you can get it in and take two or three dribbles and have time for a pass, maybe a couple quick passes, and uh, see what kind of shots you can get. Now, if you're uh, Phelps, uh, you got to apply a good aggressive defense down here, and let's see if they put a, yep, Cody Reynolds, I think that's a good strategy. Uh, put a man on the man, uh, bring the ball inbounds. You got three seconds. You got to shoot. Didn't get it off in time. Uh, didn't get it off in time, so we're going in double overtime. Tell you what, we may get home sometime tonight, but that's all right. 73 73. Oh, no doubt about it. This has been a good one, and looks like we're going to go four more minutes. So let's go ahead, and we're going to take about a minute anyway here. Uh, these announcers need a break here, Dr. Don. I'm sure you probably do on that camera too, and uh, we'll bring it back for another four minutes right here in the second overtime for Millard. Bill Bevins along with Bill Be Wesley Bevins. Shoo! Yeah, I'll get this thing right. High school basketball action from what uh, he referred to as possibly the barn up here. Miller High School Gymnasium, 73 for the Phelps Hornets. And guess what? The Miller Mustang, 73 also. We've got another four minutes left in the second OT. We're in the second overtime. And that strategy didn't pay off that time as Nathaniel Kilgore tried to tap it way down there. And ball comes in to Lane. He missed it, but he'll go to the free throw line. See who they got that foul on. They got it on Robert May. That's going to be his fourth. So we got some key players now in, in foul trouble. Uh, Nathaniel Kilgore and Robert May with four for Millard. And you got the big boy Howe in there with four for uh, Phelps. Jordan, Jordan Howe and Cody Reynolds have both got four for Phelps. So some foul trouble could be uh, a big factor in this second overtime. Well, this is like playing five quarters of basketball. Lane's second free throw, he missed the first one. He missed them both. Rebounded by Robert May. Here comes Adam Coleman in a hurry. Chop. Uh, no good. Strapped for the rebound, claimed in there by the Phelps Hornet. And Phelps is looking to fast break. And Lane will go to that free throw line again. Fouled in there by Randall McPeak of Miller. Number four, Randall McPeak. It's his third personal foul. That's going to be third on McPeak. And Lane is going back to the free throw shot for two more. He missed them both while ago. Let's see what he does this time. Connects on this one. Gives Phelps the lead by one, 74-73. Of 
second free throw, missed it. That, I'll tell you what, this, this Robert May kid gets a lot of rebounds for this Miller. Oh, ball. yeah, he knows how to put a body on people and block out. That's uh, Here's Jared Aggins, long three-pointer, in and out for him. Wouldn't go. Halfway down the iron, circle back out. These two teams got the crowd involved, and I'll tell you, there's uh, fans standing up all over the place. We got fans standing up in the bleachers, and we got fans standing up down around the doors at the lower end of the court. It has been a good one. Here's the big boy, Howell, out there. Outside, top of the circle, into Cody Reynolds. Nice back door, and some he just put it in. Some contact, no call, though. 76, 73, Phelps by three. Miller needs a basket right here. Less than three minutes left to go in the game. Here's Jared, Jared Aggins, Moore. shot put up, got it. So Jared Aggins has played a super here in these overtimes. Well, no doubt about it, that was a good take that time. He just uh, made a little crossover dribble and took it right to the goal and nobody from Phelps uh, switched over and come to pick him up. So he had a wide open layup that time. Here's Phelps with it and ball goes out of bounds. Let's see, I believe it'll stay with the Phelps Hornets. I don't know who gets it. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't out <laughs> He's uh, breaking out in the comedy strip, ain't he? <laughs> <laughs> if he ain't out there up here, Jason Webb said, ball goes out of bounds, he doesn't know who gets it. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be Phelps bringing in bounds, close to a five second call down there. Here's Cody Reynolds with it outside to Stiltman. They get it in, stripped away by Nathaniel Kilgore. He stepped ball on the ball. Adam Coleman shot for that, got it. Miller leads it by one, 77-76. Good defense in there by Kilgore and the Mustangs. 2-11 left to go. Here's Phelps with it. They looking for somebody inside the lane. Shot put up, no good. And rebounded by Nathaniel Kilgore. Two minutes, two minutes remaining in the second overtime. Two minutes remaining. They give it out to Jared Aggins. And if you're Miller right now, I think you gotta run your offense and make sure you get a good shot this trip down. Right. Kilgore inside, shot put up. Somehow he got it up and in. 79-76. Miller takes the lead by three. Minute 35 left to go in the game. They try to get it into the big boy. I believe they'll get uh, Robert May from behind. And that's going to be his fifth. He's going to foul out. Fouls on Miller, number 40, Robert May. Is his so I think he'll probably back. come in with Stewart, one of the other seniors. Robert May's going to foul out, and he's a senior tonight. So on his senior night, so he's, uh, he's played a heck of a ball game, and he's going to the bench. And uh, he's going to send Jordan Hall back to the strap for two more. Checking into the uh, lineup for Millard will be into the Robert Spears. Spears. Robert Spears into the lineup. I believe he, is he, I think he's just a freshman, isn't he? He's a freshman this year, so this is the first time he's been on the court tonight. So let's see what uh, he could do stepping into a high pressure situation. He's a big kid in there. He's a freshman. He's under a lot of pressure though. 79, 76. That's how old. Be that that charity strike. He missed it. Still got a minute 27. Still a long time to go in this one, though. And you know all of these players out here are starting to feel the pressure. Oh, we have absolutely. To do I feel the pressure, and I'm sitting up here in the bleachers. Second free throw is rebounded by Jared Aggins. And right now, if you're Millard, I think you hold the basketball, but if you've got the good look, you go ahead and take it. But I think you've got to take care of the basketball. Jared Aggins almost lost it into Nathaniel Kilgore. Shot put up, and he was fouled. And I believe that's going to be on number 50, Jordan Hoff. It is. That's his field. Nope, nope. They got number 24, uh, Lane. Steve Lane. Steve Lane. That's going to be his third. I thought they were going to get uh, Hall with the foul. But I guess that's one that could go either way. They were both there, so uh, they just caught that one on him. Uh, Wayne. Nathaniel Kilgore, he missed the first free throw. He'll have one more look at it. Trying to put his team on top by four. They lead it by three, 79 to 76. If you've just now tuning in, you've missed a good one. We're in double overtime from the Millard High School Gymnasium. 114 left to go in the second OT. It's Kilgore. Missed them both. 
Shot goes out of bounds. It'll belong to the Miller Mustangs. Uh, Robert Spears tried to save that one. <laughs> it looked like he took out one of the Mustang cheerleaders down there, but she's up. She looks like she's all right, and we're ready to get back to playing. All right. 79-76, and Phelps wants to call timeout. Dr. Don says to keep it here, so we're just going to keep it right here and not go anywhere for a while. Still got a minute, seven left to go, 79-76. Tell you what, this has been a good one. And, you know, I don't know what's going to happen. Are we in store for a third overtime? Uh, <laughs> I couldn't tell you. I don't know. The way this game is going, probably. Uh, I know everybody in the stands and the players, the referees, us, the announcers, uh, everybody has to be getting completely exhausted. I know they're uh, driving me crazy. This is the first time I've kept a scorebook in a long time, and I'm writing down points and stuff, trying to keep five supplies. Uh, they're getting me confused, I'm telling you. They're out there playing so hard and stuff, and it's, you know, it's a shame that one of these teams has to come out of this game the loser because really if you look at it both of these teams the way they played and as hard as they played both teams deserve to win that's right but only one can go out of here with a big w if not we'll keep playing overtimes <laughs> till somebody does one minute and seven seconds i think if you're milled right here you don't foul you just play good aggressive defense see what see if you can hold them defensively and if you're Phelps, I think you go to the big boy underneath to try to get the score underneath. You don't need a three right now. Oh, no doubt about it. You still got a minute left to go. If you're Phelps, you just need a good shot right now. A score of any kind. And good defense almost stripped away. A whistle and a foul. I believe it'll go against the Phelps Hornets. Number they got 24, Lane. Steve Lane, that's going to be his fourth. And uh, he fouled Jared Aggins, so Aggins is going back to the shot for two more free throws. Good defense by the Miller Mustangs out there to uh, make uh, Phelps fumble the ball, so to speak. And Well, Aggins is three or four from the stop tonight, so uh, let's see if he can step up there and uh, increase Miller's lead here a little bit. First free throw, good. I'll tell you what. If he connects on this one, you definitely have to say that Millard's in the driver's seat. Second free throw, short, tapped up and in, almost went in. Nathaniel Kilgore got in there somehow, and Nathaniel Kilgore just playing his heart out for the Millard Mustangs. He comes from behind, and ball hustle defense by Kilgore. And Kilgore being uh, really aggressive, he may have to uh, watch what he's doing, though. Calm down a little bit. He's got to remember, he's got four personal fouls, so one more, and he's gone. Not a, long, not a lot of time left to go in this one, though. Let's see if they can hold him defensively here. They've got him trapped. And a whistle and foul. It'll go against Jared Aggins. That'll send the... Is uh, Phelps in the double bonus? Oh, both teams have been okay. in the double bonus for a long time. All right. That foul was on Jared Atkins. That's his uh, third personal foul. That'll send Cody Reynolds, number three, in there to the charge strike. What's he done from the line tonight? So far, he is 50%, two of four. All right, 40 seconds left to go in double overtime, and we're just going to keep it right here. Folks, if you're tuning in to us late, we're bringing you high school basketball action on Intermountain Sports Channel 5. Bill Wesley Bevins doing the color commentating for me tonight. I'm Bill Bevins and joined by Dr. Don Bevins on camera. We're in double OT, double overtime here from the Millard High School Gymnasium where Millard is playing host to the Phelps Hornets. It's senior night and uh, tell you what, these young men and coaches have put on a good one for the crowd up here tonight. Oh, no doubt about it. They've got uh, their money's worth on their tickets for tonight, that's for sure. And uh, who knows the way this game's gone, we could go to another overtime. 80 to 76. Millard on top by four. You, you definitely have to say that the advantage goes to Millard right now. You know, they've, they've got the lead by four, but uh, Phelps uh, is going to the charity strike for two. And the clock is stopped. Oh yeah, if you're Phelps, that's the best thing that could have happened. Uh, Get, get the clock stopped and get a chance to go to the line and score without any time running off the clock. 40 seconds left to go in 
in double overtime. That'll be Cody Reynolds, number three, stepping in there for the Phelps Hornets. He'll be in there for two. He's two or four from the charity strike tonight. Wipes a little bit of that sweat off that forehead. First free throw, good, got it. Some people call it perspiration, but it's good old-fashioned sweat. That's what it is, 80 to 77. It's ice water running <laughs> through the veins when he steps up there and uh, nails that foul shot like that. Second free throw, no. Rebounded by Jared Aggins, 80 to 77. And right now, Millard and quickly a whistle and a foul on Stiltner. That's going to be his fourth. So one more and he's going to be gone. And uh, I believe he fouled Jared Aggins. That's going to send him back to the strap. So Jared Aggins will have a chance to uh, just about, well, I'm not going to say put this thing out of reach, but put him definitely in the driver's seat. And uh, so far, Aggins is one for two in overtime from the strap. If he could connect on both of them here, Miller would be in good shape, that's for sure. Connects on the first, and they lead it by four, 81-77. And if he connects on this one, no good. Phelps has got to put some points on the board in a hurry. And if they don't, if Miller rebounds, you've got the foul and a jump ball. Position arrow goes to the Miller Mustangs. Right now, if you're Phelps, Bill Wesley, you're down by four. You've got to foul quickly. You have to you foul. Have to you foul can't now. let any time run off you, the clock. You have to foul now. And that was Keith Stiltner, if I'm not mistaken. And if it is, that's going to be his fifth. Yes, it Stiltner is. And that's, he's going to be gone. Stiltner is going to foul out with uh, three points. Well, played a good four game tonight for him. He's one of the guards for this team. Oh, no doubt about it. He is one of the, he's one of their leaders. And uh, he's the one that gets them in their set, gets them set up, and starts the offense for them. So that could be a big loss for him. That'll be Adam Coleman stepping to the charity strike. First one underway, no good. Too hard off the back of the iron. I'll tell you what, this, this if he could connect on this and make it a two possession ball game, oh, put him up by four, which he does. No, excuse me, put him up by five. five. 24 seconds left. Long three pointer. Count the three pointer for, let's see, who was that? That was, that was Billy Freeman on the three-point shot. And Joe Marston wants an intentional foul, but he's not going to get it. Foul was on number three, Cody Reynolds, his fifth. Personal and that's going to uh, foul out Cody Reynolds. That's going to be his fifth. So he's going to foul out for the Hornets. Tell you what, two important free throws here for the young sophomore, Adam Coleman. He played a good second half. Joe Marston wanted an intentional foul there, but he's not going to get it just at this stage of the game because they know they're going to foul and put them at the... When life's unfortunate events happen, we sometimes see people at their worst. That's why we make it our goal to give them our best. If you've been involved in an auto accident, have a workers' compensation, social security, or SSI claim, you need an attorney with proven results. You need John Earl Hunt. I'm attorney John Earl Hunt. I believe in the U.S. Constitution, and I support the American flag. I'm a country lawyer. I'd be honored to represent you in your case. I'll treat you right. I'll do the best I can to help you. Mustang, six seconds. Kilgore comes out though with it and jump ball. It's going to go back to Phelps. Back to Phelps. They got a chance to still got a chance to tie this thing. So they've got two seconds to bring it in down by three. So you know there's nothing inside the three point line going to go up right here. Nope. Everything has to be behind Everything. the strike. Behind the strike. Two seconds, 83 80. Here comes the ball game right here. Stiltner not going to get the shot off in time. Miller wins it 83 to 80 in double overtime. The Miller Mustangs win up here on senior night 83 to 80 over these Phelps Hornets. And uh, folks, we have witnessed a good one. The Miller Mustangs winners up here on senior night over the Phelps Hornets in double overtime. Final score 83 to 80. Let's go ahead and take a break, Dr. Don. Give Bill Wilson a chance to add up some of these stats, and uh, we'll bring it back and uh, close this thing out right here from the Miller High School Gymnasium.
Back at the... We've been bringing you exciting high school basketball action, real exciting. Two overtimes, as a matter of fact, for the Miller Mustangs uh, have come out of here with a big, big win over the Phelps Hornets in double overtime, final score 83 to 80. Uh, and Bill Wesley, it was a good one. Oh, no doubt about it. It was a uh, tooth and nail the whole way. Uh, Phelps come out and started the game hot, and they got out to a 10 or 12 point lead, and Miller was able to cut into it and cut it down to uh, five, I believe, at halftime. And, uh, they both played a good second half, and uh, they uh, give us a great, exciting game. That's for sure. Some of these uh, seniors up here uh, on the basketball team this year, of course, you had Nathaniel Kilgore, Chris Coleman, uh, who didn't get a chance to play tonight, uh, Robert May and uh, Robert Stewart uh, playing. Uh, of course, uh, they'll have some more home games uh, up here. Uh, I understand this is a senior night up here. But uh, those boys, uh, and uh, what a game to uh, have up here for senior night. What about uh, some stats for tonight's game, bud? Okay, well, we're going to run down the uh, individual scoring. Phelps ended up the game with 80 points. They were uh, led in scoring by Jordan Hall. The big boy inside had 26, and Josh Daniels had 18. Uh, Steve Lane had 19. Bill Freeman had seven. Brandon McGuire had two. Cody Reynolds had five, and Keith Stiltner had three. So, uh, Phelps, 80 points. You would think 80 would be enough to win a high school basketball game. But in double overtime, uh, maybe not. N not tonight. I guess so. Now for the Miller Mustangs. Okay, uh, they were later scoring by the point guard. Sophomore Adam Coleman had 20, not 21, he had 31. Excuse me. He had 31 points, come up big in overtime, hit a couple big shots, had some free throws down the stretch to help him win the game. So, uh, he had 31, and Jared Aggins had 21. Uh, Nathaniel Kilgore had 14, and Robert May had 14. And Randall McPeak came off the bench, and he scored two. So they had a final score of 83, which just happened to be uh, just enough to pull this game out, it looked like. It was a silent game, no doubt about that. Uh, and what a game for a senior night up here where the Miller Mustangs once again have just claimed victory over the Phelps Hornets. Uh, once again, our final score, 83 to 80. So for my son, Bill Wesley Bevins, and the doctor man behind camera, I'm Bill Bevins saying good night, everybody.